1985 was the last time the Huskies traveled here to Brigham Young Territory in Cougar Stadium. Then the defending national champions, BYU Cougars, put a hurting on the Huskies, who were ranked number two the previous year, 31 to three. The Cougars did it with offense and with great defense. Since then, the Huskies have avenged that loss. We are here in the Wasatch Mountain Valley, Provo, Utah, in the shadows of Squaw Peak for what could be an exciting electric college football game. And Certainly great atmosphere here. Kevin Calabro, I'm pleased as much to be here with the slinger, Sonny Sixkiller. And Sonny, I would think that the outcome of this game will be decided down on the line of scrimmage. Well, you said it, Kevin. With the heat and everything involved with the altitude today, it really is going to be a dab up front. And last year in Husky Stadium, the offensive line came through, allowed enough time for the quarterback to look around and find receivers open downfield for the big score. The other thing they did is they ran block extremely well and allowed guys like Rashawn Sheehy to find enough time to get in the end zone. Well, the fans are charged. BYU was 13-1 and one last year. The Huskies put the only loss on them, so there's a revenge factor going. And keep in mind, the Cougars have won 12 straight coming into this afternoon's game. A sensational atmosphere. The fans are ready. We're ready. And you got to believe that that Husky defense is ready, led by the monster man, Jason Shorak. Well, the man that is synonymous for making football successful here in the Wasatch Mountain Valley at Brigham Young University, Lavelle Edwards, 66 years old, down his 26th year, eighth winningest active NCAA, 18 WAC titles, and, of course, the coach of the 1984 National Champions. You know, there are only three other coaches in the country, Bowden at Florida State in his 32nd year, Joe Pa. At Penn State, Joe Paterno in his 32nd, and Tom Osborne in his 25th at Nebraska with more years' service with the same team. All right, Brigham Young will be receiving the kickoff. They have won the toss, and the kicker, Sonny, will be an untried commodity. Randy Jones for the Huskies, number 48, 6'2", 210 sophomore out of Ferris High School in Spokane, Washington. He hasn't kicked in a Husky football game yet. This has got to be exciting for him. Of course, the kicking game will be most important for the Huskies. They were last in net punting yardage last year. They have a new punter in Sean O'Glaughlin, and they have a new place kicker in the name of Randy Jones, who will be being, uh, doing, obviously, the kickoff duties and the place kicking chores as well. And I think you're back with us, son. I think I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good to be back. <laughs> I didn't miss the kickoff, though. <laughs> so for Jones, obviously some excitement. And for the Cougars, men back, the kickoff, the run up, and it is drilled out of the end zone. Beautifully done. And so the Huskies will be on defense first. Brigham Young University will take possession of the football on the 20 yard line. And a new commodity, a new quarterback by the name of Paul Shoemaker, six feet, 200, a junior from Longmont, Colorado. He's only had 13 attempts in his two year career here at Brigham Young University with two touchdowns. He is a right-hander. They have an untried backup in the name of Kevin Paterik, who's a left-hander. He's a sophomore. And Drew Miller from the state of Washington, a great quarterback in the state of Washington last year as a prep, is the third on the 3-D. It's Shoemaker under center, and men come off the mark, and there are flags thrown. Shorak obviously indicating that BYU flinched on the line of scrimmage and it appeared from this angle anyway that BYU did have a lineman moving although Shoemaker indicates it was against the Huskies and it is indeed offsides against Washington on the opening play of the ball game. <laughs> Big hit on Nate Foreman number five the tight end Dustin Johnson not starting the game who was we thought was going to be starting for the Cougars they got Nate Foreman in there and he says hello to Jason Chorak. Take a look at the offense for BYU. It'll be Tate, Wong, Anderson, Cox, and Bateman up front. Shorak up on the line to the right-hand side. Shoemaker, the quarterback under center. Two fakes, throws out on the flat. A man wide open in midfield, getting inside Husky territory to the 35, inside the 35-yard line. Big play for BYU. Some play action and a man wide open on the left flat, Jermaine Smith for the Huskies comes over to make the stop, Sonny, but not before a big pickup by the Cougars. Dustin Johnson in the game that time, Kevin. 
absolutely came on. He was on the far side of the field, went to the flat, and just turned it up, and nobody was with him. They cleared out with the wide out. As you can see, Parrish and uh, Jermaine Lewis, right with Jermaine Smith, right with the wide out. Two receivers wide on the right side for the Cougars. Shoemaker under center. Here's the give to the second man through. Up the middle. He has running room. He leans forward, but a fumble to about the 16-yard line. Jensen is there on top of the football. So are some Husky DBs, but they're going to rule that the man was down. And it will remain in the hands of the Cougars. That handoff inside, I believe, to Brian McKenzie, who leaned forward for some big time yardage as he got loose up the middle. Well, he's a big running back. He's 215 pounds, and right there, big hole, Lester Towns with the miss on the tackle. If the DBs do not want to be doing this all day. So the Cougars now at the Husky 20 yard line, first and 10. Shoemaker again hands off to McKenzie, and he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And on the gang tackle was Jensen along with some teammates actually the the tackle made in there by Suki Wiggs up front with help from Issa Jabari Issa Suki Wiggs and Chris Campbell up front for the Huskies Chorak Hairston Towns and Jensen with Smith Burton Parrish and Miller in the defensive backfield and so the Cougars have moved swiftly with a pass play and a run up the middle deep into Cougar territory Second down and 10. The ball resting at the Husky 20 yard line. Shoemaker, diminutive quarterback at 6 2, steps back, throw pass left side. It's a screen slowly developing. McKenzie breaks outside, leans forward inside the five yard line. Another sensational pickup. Tony Parrish is there with a stop for the Huskies. That's one thing the Cougars love to do. They, as we've seen, misdirection, they clear out, they throw underneath routes. They have big gaping running holes like that, and they come back with a screen, and it's good play calling by the BYU team. McKenzie is a senior from Sarasota, Florida, a junior college transfer. He led BYU in rushing last year with 950 yards. He'll sit this one out as the Huskies now are faced with a goal line stand. First and five yard line, or first and five yards, I should say, and it's about the six yard line. And again, the Huskies jump offside. And that'll be a free play for BYU, but Shoemaker's spun around in the backfield, and now we've got a Bit of a tussle breaking out between the combatants as Nigel Burton comes over with some words for the Cougars. Nigel's a tough little guy, but uh, Shoemaker's doing an awful good job of cadence calling down there. The Huskies have been jumping off sides almost in every play of this drive. Before the snap, Before the snap off, five, off five on the defense. Second penalty of the afternoon so far on the Huskies, who defensively have looked shaky early. The defense has been strung out and BYU has been able to find the seams, find the gaps. Take a look at just a two or three offense, defensive, defensive linemen for the Huskies jumping off. Kevin, it's good to see Suki Wiggs in the lineup, though, healthy. Last year he missed most of the season. He's been injured a lot, of, a lot of his career at the UW. And if he can make some penetration down there when they need it now, it certainly would be at a good time. He was a backup last year, but plenty of experience across the front line. Campbell, Chorak, Issa was a backup last year. They've got to stand some people up now as BYU has it first and three at the goal line, running around the right side. Great one-man tackle there, applied by Tony Parrish coming up from that free safety position. Will Snowden trying to get around the right side. Parrish was equal to the task. Very good pursuit angle right here by Tony Parrish. One reason he made all Pac-10 last year, Kevin. See Jason taking on the lead blocker up there, allowing Parrish, nobody in front of him, just to turn him on and cut him off. Second down and the ball resting at the two-yard line for the Cougars of Brigham Young University. 11.59 left in the opening stanza. BYU charging down the field from their own 20. Shoemaker back to give to McKenzie. Rumbles up the middle. Shorak came up over the top of the pack and actually grabbed McKenzie from behind to restrain him and pull him back. And the ball will be marked, I believe, inside the one-yard line. So about six inches and goal for BYU. 
And this will bring up a third down situation. Kevin, these BYU Cougar linemen are huge. They average 6'6", over 300 pounds. And when you're in the trenches down like they are right now, you've got, you're going against guys like Chris Campbell at 240. Very tough run defender, but when you have a guy over 300 pounds hammering on you, it's tough. Jason Anderson is their senior center from San Jose, 6'6", and 285. To his right side is Matt Cox, 6'6", and 310. I'm a little surprised at the size of a guard. Ordinarily, you don't see guards at 6'6", but they have another one on the left side by the name of Wong, 6'6", and 313. He's a junior. So a timeout has been called with the Cougars in command right now. No score yet, but the ball resting at the Husky one-yard line here in the first quarter. Third down, the ball resting at the Husky six-inch line. 11-11 to go in the opening stanza in Provo. Shoemaker, the quarterback, under center. Two men in the backfield. He's going to go alone, and he scores. Shoemaker up the middle. I don't think so, Kevin. Well, let's wait and see. BYU indicating touchdown, but that doesn't count until the officials do, and now they have as they unsort things there in the pile. Brigham Young scores going right up the middle is Paul Shoemaker on the hip of Jason Anderson. Sonny just touched on the great size of that offensive line of Brigham Young, and he went right in behind Jason Anderson at 6'6 and 285. He just went right in there on Issa and Wiggs up front for the score. Well, Paul Shoemaker is known for running ability as well as throwing ability, and right here, good call by the BYU offensive coordinator. Don't make too many mistakes. Just get, get, get behind the big guys. Owen Potchman, freshman from Mercer Island with the extra point kick. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. It's good, and Brigham Young has scored with 11.09 left in the opening stanza. They lead it 7-0. Well, the Washington Huskies fall behind BYU 7-0 as Brigham Young Cougars go the length of the field starting at their own 20-yard line. A drive that covered seven plays, 80 yards, three minutes and 51 seconds, the time of possession. That pass play to Johnson, a reception of 43 yards and the 13-yard run by McKenzie were the highlights of the drive capped by the plunge for the touchdown from Paul Shoemaker at about six inches out. Now the Huskies will receive the football for the first time this afternoon. Potchman, the freshman from Mercer Island, Washington, with a long kickoff to Jerome Payton. He'll take it in his own end zone, but deep one knee he'll touch, and the Huskies will begin action this afternoon on the offensive end at their own 20-yard line, trailing 7 to nothing. So quickly, the Husky offense will be tested here this afternoon at Cougar Stadium, and it will be Brock Ewart. 6'5 and 220 sophomore from Puyallup High School, ranked by many in this country to be one of the top five collegiate quarterbacks. And of course, he came on last year in the victory over BYU in Seattle for an injured Shane Fortney and got off four pass attempts, played the following weekend in the win over Arizona and passed for 300 yards. Ewart has waited all summer for this moment and has worked extremely hard. So the Husky offense begins on their own 20. Ewart back to throw. The left-hander has a man in the flat juggling the ball but making the reception and finally thrown out of bounds. Down there with a the catch, I believe, was it is Freddie Coleman slanting from the left side from his flanker position. Let's take a look at the offense, Sonny, for the Washington Huskies. Well, up front, obviously, they've got huge bodies. Coates, Catlett, Scroots, Benji Olsen, the All-American, and Davis. Well, Sheehy, Kiaho, Payton, Coleman, and now the Huskies set at the near hash mark again. It is second and third, and uh, three yards to go for the first down. Here's Ewart with a give to the right side. And running with blocking off to the right side was Sheehy for pickup maybe of the first down as he leans forward past the 30-yard line. The indication is the Huskies did indeed get the first down. Ed Keel up front with a big block for the Huskies. Leading the way, or actually Ed Keel with the, the tackle for Brigham Young. He's up there with Yancey, Monalea, Reed Morris, and Martin are the defenders, linebackers for the Cougs. First and ten now, Brock Ewart with Sheehy in motion. Throwing off to the right side, a quick pass out on the wing and making the catch but going down to his knees for the touch 
at about the 34 yard line was Jerome Papin. He's looking to have a big year the 5'11 180 pound senior worked out extensively in the offseason with Brock Ewart. I'm told they're almost of a mind the two players they know the nuances and the intricacies of the offense and know the tendencies of each other as well. Solo backfield at Sheehy the man in motion is Joe Jarzinka wide outs left and right Coleman and Payton. Hewitt with a handoff up the middle of Sheehy jukes right moves left up the center of the field he breaks to the 30 yard line gets out wide to the 20 to the sideline in the foot race tries to cut back inside the 10 to the 5 leads to the one yard line before he is brought down sensational open field running by Rashawn Sheehy. And the Huskies are right there on the door knocking here in Provo. Outstanding play. Jason Walker finally makes the stop back there in the BYU backfield. A 65 yard run from scrimmage for Rashawn Sheehy. Kevin, this is a great job right here, Rashawn Sheehy. We talked about the defensive backs for BYU before the ball game. And they're, a lot of these guys are new. They're J.C. transfers, just signed. See right there, Rashawn running away from him. Here's the handoff. It is Reed up the middle for the touchdown. And the Huskies score. And they are quickly back in the ball game at 7-7. And it was not Reed. I believe that was Maurice Shaw, number 32, that followed Kiaho into the end zone for the touchdown. Quickly, the Huskies capitalize on the 65 yard rampage from Sheehy. And it is Maurice Shaw that goes into the end zone for the touchdown. The sophomore from Sacramento, California makes it 7-6 BYU. People were talking about how do you replace Corey Dillon in the backfield, Kevin. I think Rashawn Sheehy's back. Gonna convince a lot of those people that he is back. Well, of course, was Sheehy's job last year until the foot and the heel injuries, third game of the year. Dylan stepped in and, of course, saved the day. Here's Jones with the extra point. The kick is up, but a flag. Flag on the play. Kick split the uprights. Before the play, five yard penalty. Movement by the Huskies before the play and a five yard penalty, so Randy Jones will be backed up a bit. Well, the Huskies guilty of the third penalty of the afternoon. But at the 9.22 mark here, the opening period, they have an opportunity now to tie the ball game. Sonny pointed out at the top of the program that this game would be decided in the trenches, and so far, both teams' offensive lines have made some room, created some opportunities and some options for this high-octane offense, both for the Cougars. And for the Huskies, here is the snap, the hold, the kick is up. It looks good from here, and another penalty flag. And this one is thrown in the backfield. I believe Randy Jones was knocked down. And let's see if the kick will stand and the point will count. Yeah, BYU piled into the kicker, so the penalty on the play will give the Huskies the point, and we have a tie ball game. 7-7 seven, seven score on the Shaw one-yard run. 9.22 left, opening session. We'll have more in a moment. Well, the Huskies come right back to tie this ball game at 7-7 at the 9:22 mark. Shaw plunges in from one yard out, but it was set up by the 69-yard run of Rashan Sheehy. Five play, 40 yards, uh, uh, a minute and 47 time of possession. It was a the Huskies, of course, taking the ball at their own 20-yard line, so an 80-yard connection for the Huskies to tie the game. Randy Jones after the penalty on the previous play steps up to the 50 and he lobs that ball off the foot up to about the 16 yard line so good play by the kicking game of the Huskies Sonny as they push BYU back there now to the 16 yard line Jones just kind of flicked it up there into the air toward the sideline hoping that maybe one of his teammates could get a handle on the on the pigskin. They've done that the last few years Kevin a little pooch kick down there and try and gain some possession or yardage like you said. Try and get BYU pinned back as close to their goal line as they possibly can and see if they can get some pressure on this young quarterback. Paul Shoemaker steps up. As we mentioned, he had just very few snaps. 13 attempts, nine completions, two TDs last year. 
and was just selected earlier this week to be the starting quarterback. He'll give to McKenzie off of right guard, and McKenzie can't pick <laughs> up any room there at all. Jerry Jensen comes in with a hard stop. Actually, it was Sataki with a carry, number 34, 6'1 and 245 sophomore from Kirkwood, Missouri. Very good hit on the last play. You had Marcus Harrison, one of the new middle linebackers, also in on the hit, but Jerry Jensen's been kind of the solid player on that defensive side for the last couple years at the linebacker position. BYU with the ball resting on their own 17-yard line. Pick up a one on that play, so it's second and nine. Wide receivers left and right. The man in motion, Sataki. Here's Shoemaker, fake give, naked bootleg, nearly tripped up in the backfield. He's going to get away. He's going to be picked up by the secondary. Towns gives Chase out to the right side. Oh, my. Nigel Burton came in there, assisted by Jermaine Smith with a big tackle, but not before Shoemaker could pick up the first down. The ball's out there at about the 27-yard line. Boy, Burton put a lick on him, didn't he? He did, but the, the, there it is again. Paul Shoemaker with a little run, not having enough time to set up for the pass right here with pressure. Looked like couldn't quite tell who it was on the ground there, but there again, that's what their offense needs to do from BYU's standpoint. Shoemaker's already proven to be elusive with that play there. The naked bootleg, the quick little juke step left, and then scooting off to the sideline for the first down. First and 10, clock running, 8.17 left. Opening stanza, here's the give. Second man through McKenzie. Muscles his way to the line of scrimmage and might have picked up a yard on the play. The stop up front, made by Big Mac. Tui Aea. Mac Tui Aea, 6'6 six, six and 290 is sophomore. Well, the Washington Huskies in season openers, 75, 26, and 6 in the history, of the long and illustrious history of the football program. On the road, 7, 8, and 2. BYU in season openers at home, 29 and 1. And you can see why they play at nearly a mile high. It's extremely warm here. They play on this grass and they have 65,000. Ecstatic fans in the stands. Here is the handoff, and there were men coming off the line of scrimmage too soon for the Huskies, and the offensive lineman of BYU raised as well, so they will sort it out. False start. False start, and a penalty assessed to BYU. There have been a lot of slow calls today on both touchdowns. It was like a little confusion from the official. Mm -hmm. Who's it? Did he get in or didn't he get in? And here again, this play was already started before they blew the whistle. About to ask you, you've seen about a gazillion openers in college football. Is this Unique that you see these number of penalties, or is this uh, according to the way it's been laid out before? Well, I think these teams type a little of, tight. I think these type of penalties, everybody's just so anxious to get mm -hmm. started, get get to hit somebody. Their adrenaline's been flowing really high, and no, that stuff will settle down. Two men in the backfield, one man moving along the line of scrimmage. I'll settle in on the right side in a tight end position for the Cougars. Shoemaker back to throw, looking to the left side. He set up the screen to McKenzie, steps by two tacklers, angles his way to the center of the field, still on his feet, wrapped up by two tacklers and brought down in his own territory, but not before, uh, believe, a pickup of the first down. He's just shy of the 40-yard line, and they're going to indicate first and 10 now for the Cougars on their own 39-yard line. One thing on this play, you see them letting the defensive linemen rush in, Kevin, but one thing, the linebackers have to be aware of where the running backs are going. That is their responsibility. They see them hiding out there behind the big linemen. They've got to get their tail over there. Once again, McKenzie with a nice catch. In the opening drive, McKenzie with a 13-yard run and a reception by Johnson, a 43-yard set up BYU for the opening score, but we're tied at 7-7. 6.36 to go, opening stanza. Here's the handoff, second man through, Sataki, wrapped up, stood up, and finally Peter dropped the by Jerry Jensen inside. The whip linebacker for the Huskies. Jerry will come in and fill those holes from that whip linebacker position. He's already done it twice today for some good stops. Jerry from Cascade High School in Everett. And we have a man down for the Huskies on the defensive end. Well, getting up to his feet, and trying to clear the cobwebs for Washington is one of their down offensive linemen, Jason Shorak. I think might have twerked that left shoulder a little bit, Sonny, and he's coming off. Well, you knew he was going to be a marked man today with uh, mm -hmm. multiple people picking him up. And the thinking then was with Shorak getting so much attention that Chris Campbell on the opposite side of that front line 
Might have a lot of things coming his way. See him going against Eric Bateman, the big offensive tackle. He's just getting sandwiched in there by Joe Wan coming from the other side on a little uh, trap play. And hitting him right on the shoulder, forcing him into another <laughs> rock. Shoemaker with a give off to the left side, slanting to the 50 inside Husky territory, down to about the 47 yard line as Will Snowden stop on the play made by Tony Parrish of Washington. 6-12 to go. And a tie ball game at 7-7. Great quickness so far. I'm impressed by BYU's quickness out on the field. They've done a, a very nice job of mixing up the plays as well to keep the Husky defense a little bit off balance. Two men in the backfield, wide outs left and right, and a man in motion for BYU. Shoemaker, the quarterback. And off to the second man through. Shoestring tackle and a beauty. The man who had been knocked down, Josh Smith, was on the floor. I mean, on his belly. But was able to reach out and shoestring tackle Snowden. Beautifully done by Smith, the junior from Bellingham High School. Good job by Jason. I'm right here, you're going to see him coming through here. Josh Smith with a good job sticking that big paw out there. And we're going to see a lot of different players down there in that defensive line. We've got Mac 2 IA in there now, a defensive tackle, and, and big old Josh Smith in there as well. Wide outs left and right for BYU. Quick handoff. It's a shoemaker actually with a quick snap. Stumbles into the backfield and is brought down to one knee at his own 41 yard line. So a big loss there for the Cougars. Well, there's one of the things you were talking about. Chris Campbell coming through with a nice sack. The best thing he did right there as opposed to when the last scramble is a guy out of position. I believe it was like last time Jason Chorak was just over pursuing the quarterback, allowing him to break inside. That time, Chris Campbell does an outstanding job right here of recognizing the play, but he settles down, settles down, and look at his eyeballs. They're right at that belt buckle. Loss of 11 on that play. Campbell with a big stop. Smith with a big stop. 431 left in the opening stands at three. Third down and 21 yards to go. Here's Shoemaker back to throw from the shotgun. Looking to the right side. Going to throw a little screen pass outside. But the Huskies cover that up beautifully. They had four guys in the vicinity. Nigel Burton makes the initial contact and brings Aaron Cup down for the loss. And so the Huskies will now receive the first punt of the afternoon from Brigham Young University. Previous to that, BYU had six first downs so far. Well, it looked like on this drive that BYU was just methodically moving down the field with some nice play calling, and Chris Campbell comes up with a big defensive play to stop him. Shorak still being attended to down on the Husky bench. Jerome Payton is the lone man back to receive the punt. From J.D. Hartsfield, the junior from Glendale, Arizona. High snap. But an adjustment by Hartsfield and a high booming spiral taken by Payton at his own 12 down the right side. Hashmark has a block, cuts back left side, angles to the middle, still on his feet, and then tripped up and dropped at about the 28 yard line. And that's where Brock Hewitt and company will take over for the Huskies, who have tied this ball game at 7 7. Timeout on the field with 3.28 left in the opening quarter of play. 7 7 our score, BYU and Washington. Tie game 7-7. Huskies with their second possession of the afternoon. Ewart play action looking to throw. Looking for the bundle. Down deep. He's got a man. It's Payton making the catch between defenders. Holds it down. Secures the ball. And is brought down deep inside Brigham Young territory. An outstanding throw thrown by Brock Ewart, Sonny. I'll tell you, Kevin, they had double tight ends that time. Single back. Little play action, little quick look like a play action, and then he's just setting up, throwing the ball downfield. We most Husky fans know that Brock Hewitt throws a beautiful long ball, but the most amazing thing about this reception is number 24, Jerome Payton, probably one of the best athletes on the squad, coming up and making the big grab. Jerome with a 46-yard hookup from Hewitt, and here is Brock under center. Man jumps off for BYU, no flag, hand off to Sheehy, reverses his trio, goes right to left, has a blocker out in front of him, skirts to the sideline, tried to tiptoe alongside, and then is clipped and brought down at about the 15-yard line. BYU was, it appeared anyway, over the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they'll decline this one. 
And I'll take Sheehy's open field run, a great reversal of field right to left by Rashad Sheehy. And a good downfield blocking by the Huskies as well, as you can see on the replay. I thought it was a good ad lib by Rashawn Sheehy <laughs> going to the right side looking up here and everybody kind of sees that flag out of their eye and I think maybe BYU hesitated momentarily and good job Freddie Coleman downfield staying on his man allowing him mm -hmm. to pick up the first down. So the Huskies have it now at BYU's 15 yard line we're tied at 7 7 3 0 2 left in the opening period of play. Payton wide left Freddie Coleman right. Man in motion is Reed. Here's the handoff to Sheehy going right side. Got a man in front of him. Good blocking down to about the 11 yard line. Sheehy is upended down there, but not before gaining some ground. Spencer Reed makes the stop for BYU. It's a good power formation for the Huskies. They end up with Mike Reed in motion towards the hole. And also, you see 51 Brad Hutt, the Air Force transfer out there in front. One of the reasons why the Huskies are regarded so highly is because of the offensive line, and he's one of those key backups. Boy, just great depth. Just sensational depth up front. Hutt is 6'3 and 285 and a backup. Double receivers left side. Jarzinka is in the slot right side. Ewart's going to check at the line of scrimmage. He looks to his left, hands off, stutter step, leaning forward, and angling to about the 11 yard line down there. Rashad Sheehy. So, with 2.08 remaining, in the opening period of play, score tied at 7-7. Sonny, we've got a third down and six situation for the Huskies, who were outstanding in the red zone last year, converting for touchdowns. Yeah, they, I believe they converted roughly 68% for touchdowns when they got into the red zone. One fellow you might look for here in this formation would be a big tight end named Cam Cleland, number 85. Mm -hmm. He stacked up on the left side. That's where Coleman is flanked. Man in motion is Payton right to left. Ewart back to throw, looking to the right side, looking up the middle, forced out of the pocket. He's going to run. Big fellow down to the five to the three yard line. Brock Ewart, I believe, picked up the first down, leaning that long 6 5 frame just ahead. And he did indeed get the first down for the Huskies. First and goal for Washington. Just as he broke out of this thing, he's looking to his right. He's coming back left. He was looking for Cam Cleveland right here. If you'd have just picked it up and threw it. Cam Cleveland was all alone in the end zone, but by that time he made up his mind. I'm sure Coach Bill Dietrich, the quarterback coach, doesn't like to see Brock Heward running out of the pocket, product out of the pocket, pocket too much. Excuse me. They've got, of course, the freshman Marcus Toyasosopo, Toyasosopo, the the backup. <laughs> and, uh, I'm getting you going now. And John Minter and Jake. K. Scott of limited experience as well. Here's the handoff trying to break free of two tacklers that had exploded into the backfield is Rashad Sheehy. He spun around and brought down at about the six yard line. Byron Frisch making the stop up front. Excellent penetration by BYU on that play. And Byron, as big as he is, he's, he's not that heavy. He's only 260 pounds, but he's very agile and very quick. So it's second down and five for the Huskies with 40 seconds remaining in the period. 7 7 score. And a timeout will be called by Washington to talk things over. We'll be right back to Provo, Utah. Cougar Stadium. Good ball game in the opener for the Huskies tied at 7 7. Well, the temperature about an hour ago down on the field, we estimated about 85 degrees. And that's where your depth now comes into play. Both teams will shuttle, particularly in the interior line, two and three deep to keep people fresh. Right now, let's see what the Huskies have up front with 34 seconds left in the opening stanza. Ewart with second and five, and the man in motion going right to left. That's Coleman. Ewart back to throw. He's three for three so far this afternoon. Lobs over the top. Peeth on first look, left shoulder, then spun back to the right. The ball was there. But slightly underthrown. Jerome had to go up, reach back behind him. A rather awkward type of position to be in in midair, Sonny, and was unable to make the catch. First of all, it's kind of a strange route. It looked to me as you come out here, it's a quick pass play, a little fade route by Jerome Payton. But why he looked back on his left shoulder, I don't quite know, unless he's trying to throw off the defensive mm -hmm. back, didn't come back to where the ball was. That's the way I, I saw it as the play unfolded. Maybe that was part of the route. Look left and spin back right. That ball was, of course, arced too high up over the head. So it is now third and five for the Huskies. Payton again, wide right on the right side. Read the man in motion, set just outside tackle on the right. Coleman now goes in motion. A lot of movement in the Husky offense this year. Ewart back to throw, slants out right side, throwing with the left hand to the right side, and it's complete, but right to Coleman. He's thrown back for no gain. 
In fact, it might have been a loss of one. Jack Williams put the hammer blow on Freddie Coleman. So the Huskies are faced with a kicking situation, and Randy Jones will come in looking for the field goal. Number three there, Williams thinks it's a big hit, but of course, he was set up by Brock Hewitt having to get rid of the football on the blitz here by Brad Martin getting in there and having forcing Brock to get rid of the ball more lot sooner than he wanted to. And oh, Freddie, Freddie wishes he had thrown in the dirt. Jack Williams comes up with a stop. Williams, 5'11 sophomore, stepping in for Omar Morgan, the starting cornerback who was all Pac 10 out because of honor violations for the first three games of the year thus far. The officials are going to wave this attempt by Jones off, and it's too bad because he split the uprights with it. The official on the near side, the line judge, was waving his hands above the head because the quarter had come to an end. Triple zero is showing. And as Sonny pointed out, the officials in the opening game of their season have had their difficulties here this afternoon as well. And I think they're going to sort this one out. The whistle was actually being blown as Jones was running up on the hold for the kick. Could have been distracting, but uh, Jones nonetheless. Had zero zero on it. We're going to change quarters and kick. Now they're going to change quarters and kick, which seems highly unfair to the Huskies. I mean, you, you're working with a kicker's psyche here. You know how yeah. fragile that can be, Sonny. <laughs> but they're going to swap into the field. We'll give Randy <laughs> Jones a chance to get his first of the year. Score tied at 7-7 in Provo. Ryan Shacoin will be the holder for the Huskies. Randy Jones from about 23 yards out trying to give the Huskies the lead for the first time this afternoon. So as they change sides of the field ends of the field Jones will open the second quarter with a chance at his first field goal of his career. He appeared in four games last year did not have a field goal attempt last year and the kick is blocked. It is blocked. Ben Cook shooting through up the middle on the left side blocks the kick. That's unfortunate because as we mentioned Jones had kicked the field goal good in a situation we appeared he still had time left in it. We thought he still had time in the first quarter but they said no they switched ends and so Jones with a kick and the block from the outside actually on the right side that man sprinting in. To coin not with a clean hold right there allowing Cook the time to get in there and get in the right position to block the, the kick. It looked like the snap had pulled him a little bit off balance there, Kevin, and so he didn't have time to put it down cleanly. So the Huskies are thwarted on that, and it's too bad because they had that huge pickup on the pass play to Payton that got him deep inside BYU territory. The Huskies, in fact, had it third and five at the five-yard line but are unable to score. So in the first quarter of play, the score remains 7-7. Now in the second period with 14-42 left, the Cougars up the middle for two yards on the play. They are second and eight at the point where they recovered the block kick inside their own 15 yard line. The Huskies had five first downs. BYU six in the first quarter rushing yards. BYU 23 the Huskies 92 passing yards 79 BYU 57 Huskies total yards 149 to 102 for the Huskies. But BYU had the football four and a half minutes longer than did the Washington Huskies. The Cougars scored on the opening play of the game. They uh, are actually the opening possession of the ball game in seven plays, 80 yards with 351 used up on the clock. They got a one yard quarterback keeper for the score. 7 7 is their score here in the second period. BYU with possession. Well, the second quarter began with a blocked field goal attempt from about 23 yards out by the Huskies and Randy Jones. The Cougars now with possession. Coming up on their second play with eight yards to go for the first down since they recovered that block kick. Shoemaker came up to set it up, backs off, and we haven't yet been given the go by national television. The players will relax out on the field with 4.15 left here in this second period of play. Unfortunate possession there for the Husky Sunny. We, we mentioned that they marched the football up the field beautifully. It was, of course, a long pass up the middle from Ewart to Payton that 
got the Huskies deep into Cougar territory. But the Cougars now take over with a defensive play. And Shoemaker scrambling out of the pocket into the end zone. He is still on his feet, makes a pass out on the right flat. The ball is knocked down and maybe even picked off over there by the Washington Huskies. Slamming over to make the big play from the cornerback position is Mel Miller. He was over there on the pass coverage. The Huskies got up the middle and they forced Mr. Shoemaker out of the pocket and it appeared for a moment as if he might be dropped in the end zone. Again, that's his nifty footwork, but right here they're going back to a five-step drop right in the middle of the pocket. And the couple times they've done this, they've nobody's been open downfield, which forces him to try and get out of the pocket and save himself. You see Jason Chorak there diving for his feet, but not coming up with it. And Mac T was in the house as well, giving chase to Shoemaker. Shoemaker back now, third and eight. Ball resting at about his 12-yard line. Shoemaker, straight drop, man blitzing. Nigel Burton puts a, a real, real shot into Shoemaker's ribs, drops him into the end zone, but Shoemaker was able to get rid of it on the right side and nearly completed the pass, and somehow he's able to get up to his feet and run over to the bench as Burton blindsides him, got him right in the rib cage. They'll bring that little rover. He's only 160 pounds, but Nigel Burton's a tough little dude, and uh, Paul Shoemaker knows he can hit. Big time shot applied by Burton, and so the Husky defense quickly puts a stop on BYU there, forcing him into a punting situation from their own zone. Last year, Nigel Kevin had two sacks. He was close to number three for our number one for this year. Joe Jarzinka back to receive the punt. From Potchman, the freshman. Here's the high boot, a wobbler. Jarzinka runs up on it. He'll take it at the 50. Fair catch indicated wisely. Good field position now for the Huskies. Set up by the defensive stop, and Brock Ewart and company will take over from their own 49 yard line. Score tied at 7 7. Brigham Young in Washington. More action coming up next. Well, after the second punt of the afternoon from the Cougars, J.D. Hartsfield, the Cougars relinquish possession of the football, and the Huskies set up at their own 49-yard line. Ewart, the handoff to Sheehy, the left side, has a blocker, leans forward, gains some meaningful ground, a pickup of maybe seven, yard line, of seven yards before he is dropped back. And uh, with 13.44 to go, clock running, Rob Morris coming over to make the stop from his linebacker position. She he has been workman like this afternoon for the Huskies figures to have if he can stay healthy a big year for them. Great great size in that upper body she he I'm told bench presses nearly 400 pounds that is incredible 210 pound senior 511 and one of the team captains and now they come over and take a look at Rashawn Sheehy took a pretty good shot there and checking the vision of Sheehy. So stepping into the backfield is Maurice Shaw. He's already picked up a touchdown plunge for the Huskies. Score tied at 7-7. Ewart back to throw. Looking off to the right side. Dumps it out over to Shaw. He's surrounded by BYU combatants. Coming up with the initial stop is Cliff Doman. And teaming in there is Brad Martin to make the stop. Martin is omnipresent. The weak side linebacker, 6'1 and 240, a junior from Clovis, California. And a big time performer. Had a good game against the Huskies last year. Yes, he's a very good player. One thing that happened here, Brock is looking outside for the receiver on the little curl route. Not there. He looked back again and then decided to dump it off. Huskies one for two in third down situation conversions this afternoon. They're third and four. Shaw's the man in the backfield. Number 22, Freddie Coleman. On the move right to left. You were back to throw, forced out of the pocket and has to get rid of it. And scooting right up the middle. Seemingly untouched was Isaiah Monalay, 285 pounds, right up the middle, and on to Brock Ewart. So the Huskies are forced to punt. Sean O'Laughlin is this year's punter, six feet 190 junior from Jeffersonville High School in Federal Way, a transfer from Walla Walla Junior College. The Huskies last year were dead dog last in the Pac-10 and net punting yardage. So that's one area they hope to improve in. Of course, they hope not to punt a lot during the course of these games. 7-7 count. O'Laughlin tried to pinpoint this one, sliding it off the foot and out of bounds. Deep in BYU territory. Let's see where they mark it. They're going to march it up here to, I believe, at about the 16, 17, 18, about the 18-yard line is where Paul Shoemaker and the Cougars will take over. 
So with a score tied at 7-7, we'll see if Shoemaker can come back after that ferocious hit applied by Nigel Burton in just a moment. Paul Shoemaker in under center for the Cougars who begin this march at about the 16-yard line in their own zone. Shoemaker back to throw, looking to the right side, steps up, delivers over the middle, and making the catch down at about his own 21-yard line over there was Aaron Cup, and the stop made by Marcus Hairston, who's been good enough in spring ball to come up with the start at a linebacker spot, 6'2", 35 at a Tacoma's Stadium High School. His father was a former Husky basketball player and Seattle Supersonic as well. Here comes Shoemaker now with McKenzie and Sataki in the backfield in the eye. Then shifting across that front line for the Huskies and a man jumping offside for the Cougars. Coming over the line of scrimmage was Wong. The big junior got 313 pounds going in one direction, and Sonny, that kind of momentum you can't stop. <laughs> Once you it cannot gets going, stop that train, baby. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> so penalties on the Cougars have slowed them now in this first half of play. Score tied at 7-7 with 11.27 left. BYU's fourth penalty of the afternoon for 30 yards, and the Huskies penalized three times for 13 yards. Shoemaker now faced with a second and 11. Wideouts left and right. Hand off to the second man through, and he is stopped just shy of the line of scrimmage. Good play in there by the Husky front line. Look like Josh Smith again, Kevin, in there making some people miss their blocks and uh, shutting down the blocking lanes. Third down. That play looked bad from the get-go. If you look on the right-hand side there, you see Josh Smith, 99. Jabari Issa doesn't look it. He does not look it, but he is 300 pounds. Played high school basketball as well as football. He has good quick feet. You'll see him shuffling along, along the interior there. Number 95. Here's Shoemaker back to throw. Men coming at him, converging left and right. Smith again was in there to pressure the quarterback. Shoemaker <laughs> throws over the middle, but for no appreciable gain. And so BYU will have to kick it away again. Margin hooks with a reception, but it was Hairston with the stop, but great pressure applied by the Huskies up front. Again, Smith found his way into the backfield some. I'll tell you, having Chris Campbell out at that position, Josh Smith has made the most of his minutes while he's been in there in the last two series. Kind of give Paul Shoemaker a little love toss to the ground. <laughs> J.D. Hartsfield, the junior from Glendale, will punt it now again from his own end zone. Jarzinka is back at about his own 42. Here's the punt, and it is a beauty. A high, towering spiral that's going to kick at the Husky 25, taken by Jarzinka. Dodges one tackler, tries to loop outside and avoid the grasp of two, but he can't. The diminutive Jarzinka is brought down at about the 24-yard line. That's where the Huskies will take over with 9.48 left here in the second period. A booming 650, uh, uh, 65 yard <laughs> missile. <laughs> Woo. Uh, in this altitude, you can kick him far, but not quite that far. 65 yards applied by J.D. Hartsfield on that punt. Beauty. Perfect pass. I don't think the BYU quarterbacks could throw one that nice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Drew Miller, their third stringer. I think this, he's got the best arm. This is the time I believe the Huskies need to get the ball downfield. We have not seen him throw the ball deep on that one series they did to Jerome Payton with the big catch. But you got to loosen the BYU team up a little bit. Get Nine, the ball downfield. 948 left here in the second period. The score tied at 7-7. Jarzinka, man in motion now on the slot right side. Split at that H back on the right side. Here's the handoff. Scooting off to the right side is Shaw. He gets over the line of scrimmage up there for about a five-yard gain. Just over the 30 yard line. They're going to mark it at the Husky 31. And so the Huskies going to keep it on the ground with 931 left. Spencer Reed to stop from his linebacker position for BYU. Second and three for Washington. Ball at the near hash mark. Coleman is the man in motion. Here at the handoff, Maurice Shaw spins by one tackler, eludes two, leans forward, picks up the first down, nicely done. Maurice Shaw has already registered a rushing touchdown here this afternoon. The 215-pound sophomores from Sacramento, California, picks up some 
Good ground for Washington. He had a good lead block from George Kieho. That's a nice average. Marie Shine there for Rashawn Sheehy, who still got a li little of the wobblies down there on the sidelines. Coleman off to the left side, Jerome Payton to the right. Payton will take Jack Williams with him out there at the cornerback on the left side. Now Coleman's going to come in motion here to the near side, line up behind the tight end to give this off to the left side. And Shaw again, scooting off, tackle, breaks two tackles, breaks three tackles, and is finally brought down inside BYU territory. Maurice Shaw right now is in a groove and a real track. And the Huskies are going back to him again and again. And this time, he maneuvers his way to about the 47-yard line of BYU. Just watch at the point of attack up on the top of the screen. Again, George Kieho with a good kick out block right there. But Maurice Shaw just breaking tackles. You can't bring him down with just a little hand grab down by the ankles. His legs are too powerful for that. And good, good thing that last safety came over to knock him down. You can see on the replay, Brad Hutt makes another very fine lead block from that right guard position. Good lineup in the middle as Darren Yancey and Olin Kruitz have been going at it here the last few downs. First and ten now for the Huskies. Score tied at 7 7 8, 13 left. Here's the handoff right side. Called down from behind. Jason Harris coming in for his first possession of the afternoon. Brought down by Rob Morris, the most uh, inexperienced linebacker. Big boy at 250 pounds. But Washington faced with a second and ten now. Score tied at 7-7. Jerzinka wide to the near side. Coleman to the left. Payton goes in motion. Jerzinka is lined up way out here at the flanker spot. You look back to throw. He's going to be dropped for a loss. Monalea comes in with a stop. From Wheat Ridge, Colorado, 6'2", 285, junior. And they will give him the sack. And he just busted right up the middle. You see Benji Olson coming off the field right now. Look at the right side. You got Brad Hutt down there. Brad Hutt just absolutely yep. didn't even touch his man. It looks like from this angle that Olin Kruitz messed up. But it really, at this angle right here, you see 51 get up in his stance and just blew by him. You didn't have a chance to adjust. Brock to the line of scrimmage sends Jarzinka in motion. Third and 15. Back to throws. You to the right side. Harris with a catch. He muscles his way up to about Four. the 45 yard line of BYU. Brock came off that too quick. Jerome Payton was wide open down on the right sideline. Of course, after just getting sacked, I imagine you'd want to get rid of the ball a little quicker than you normally would. But <laughs> if, he'd have, if he'd have just hung on for a split second, it would have been close to a touchdown. Not a big gainer. You would know better than anybody else. Well, the Huskies uh, with this heat this afternoon are going to the second and third deep in some positions today. Harris, of course, got the, the catch and then was the safety valve man on that particular play. His first two possessions of the afternoon. Now the Huskies are forced to punt. O'Loughlin from his own 40 will take the snap. Booms this one high into the air, angling it toward the corner where he's got a man down there inside the five and leaping out, but not in time to flick that ball back into play over there. The Washington Huskies will give it back to BYU at their own 20 yard line. Score tied at 7 7, 550 left in the first half. We'll be back to Provo in a moment. John O'Loughlin with his second punt of the afternoon, an average of 35 per, gives it to BYU now in their own zone at their 20. And Shoemaker handing off to one of his tailbacks. I believe the carry made by Brian McKenzie doesn't get any kind of gain at all in there. In fact, uh, he lost a yard on the play. It's second and 11 for BYU with 5.30 left. Clock running here in the first half. BYU's been held to 22 yards. The Huskies have capitalized for 121 rushing yards. Rushing yards just 22 for Brigham Young. Shoemaker back to throw to the right side. Ball knocked down up for grab. Shorak, I believe, was able to deflect that ball with two hands into the air and then went over to try to grab that 
dying duck before it hit the turf. He couldn't get there in time, but a nice pressure from the left side for Jason Shorak. Two things here. Watch Paul Shoemaker's head right here. He's looking the, at his receiver the whole way, and Jason can pick that up. Husky defensive end linebacker. But he'd love to have had that. He's got some family here today. Ramble into the end zone. Shorak had that left shoulder tweaked. A few moments ago, he got into the cool zone down there on the sideline and has come back refreshed. 5.08 left here in the first half. Shoemaker, deep drop again. Pressure from the right side. Cut down at the knees. Unloads. Had a man out there, but threw it too far out in front. Shoemaker is cut down at knee level. And sure, I cast some words for Shoemaker, but Shoemaker <laughs> takes some horrific shots this afternoon. Gets up and sprints off the field. Good pressure from the left side that time, Sonny. Yeah, it's Chris Campbell in there this time. Josh Smith has applied pressure on the runs on the last series. This series, Chris Campbell gets back there and hurries the quarterback. Had to get rid of it just a little bit sooner than he wanted to. J.D. Hartsfield again will punt this afternoon for the Cougars. He's back at his own three-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven score with 5.03 left in the first half. And I believe it's Jerome Payton down there to receive the punt. And this one is angled high to the air and another boomer off the foot of Hartsfield. It's taken at the 30 yard line. Payton down the left side. Stutter step heads to the middle avoids one tackle and is brought down from behind. But is able to get the ball up near midfield and the Huskies will take over at their own 45. Let's see if the Huskies can get something going Kevin again. They've had great field position 50 yard line. Now they're going to be on their own 44 yard line. Five minutes to go. It's a good time for them to get a little momentum going in for halftime. Well, the Huskies in uh, the last moments of that first quarter had a nine play, nine play, 75 yard drive that took about three minutes and 32 seconds. They had the ball third and five at the BYU five yard line. They had to settle for a field goal that was blocked by Brigham Young when they changed ends at the end of the quarter. There's Ewart under quarterback. Pivot, handoff, it's a reverse. Sheehy hands off to Coleman left side. He has Ewart in front to block. He'll work his way to the sideline. Cut back is knocked down nearly by his own man, spun around by his own man, pushed up the field by his own man. Olin Krutz, big O, was out in front of the whole action. He and Ewart were out there, and Olin was just chugging along. The only problem with that is you can't assist a running back. And he did. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't, uh, it was unavoidable as far as I could tell. They made contact. Olin grabbed his man to keep him upright. And watch this. Spins him around, sends him <laughs> up the field. Get going, Freddie. Head up the field. Way to keep him up, Olin. That's a good <laughs> job. <laughs> well, that's going to be the natural reaction out there. Cruz just trying to keep his man on his feet because he had Brock Ewart out there as the lead blocker. Ewart was out there, and so was Olin Cruz. Good play by the Huskies. A little razzle dazzle, if you will, a reverse. Sheehy to Coleman. Perfect timing on that handoff, too, Kevin. There was a BYU defender right in the same location and uh, barely got it to Freddie. Well, this play, of course, occurred right in front of the BYU bench. So Lavelle Edwards, who has had 26 years in this business as a head coach here at BYU, will lend his expertise into the, uh, the could, official's decision here. Could be a personal foul call. Aiding the runner against the offense. That's a five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Dead ball, personal foul against the defense mm -hmm. from that succeeding spot. It's an automatic first down. Five yards and then the other way. So the offshoot of this will be the Huskies will have it first and 10 with 439 left here in the first half of play. A chance for them to take the lead in this ball game for the first time. And they will have it down on the BYU 28 yard line. You don't see that play every day, aiding the runner. Five yard no. penalty. <laughs> Particularly that way. Olin Krutz with a, just a tremendous play <laughs> to, <laughs> to keep his man on his feet and send him down the field. So as it turned out, Olin Krutz with a heads up play because the Huskies come out then with the subsequent personal foul, the 15 yard penalty. So now they've got it. Again with Brock Hewitt at the controls and men moving along that line of scrimmage. Andre Desassure in the lineup for the first time. He stacked up way out to the near side. Jerzyk is in the slot. Hewitt back to throw. Pump fakes left. Goes deep. Looking for the bundle into the end zone. Has a man. Freddie Coleman into the air after it but broken up in the left side corner of the end zone. 
It was actually Jerome Payton down there, the intended receiver, not Coleman. And right with him, I believe, was Brad Martin to break it up. Now Martin's on the other side. That was looks like actually Jason Walker and Ben Cook in there as well. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good pass. I just believe he ran out of room down there. Yeah, Ben Cook getting his left hand up inside to knock that ball down. Big time play brings up second and ten now for the Huskies. Very aggressive play on first down. This is on the right side. Jerzinka moving alongside. They're stacked up. Get a duo on the right. Here's a delay handoff to Sean working his way down the left side, just trying to shuffle along there and trying to find a gap and then leans forward for a gain maybe of a yard. Brad Martin with the stop on Rashawn Sheehy. Boy, there's no substitute for speed and quickness. Rashawn Sheehy doing that all on his own. That thing was stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. He's able to get it back out and make a little positive yardage out of it. Dessasher comes off the field. Now Coleman will be brought in as the receiver. 404 left on the clock. And it is running here in the first half. Trips to the right side. Jarzinka, Payton, and Coleman stacked to the right. Here's Ewart back to throw. Looking to the right side. He's going to go in zone. Throws over the top of the cornerback. Coleman Ooh. takes it and then stumbles backwards to about the two yard line. Great little route there by Coleman who got behind the cornerback. And Ewart with receivers stacked to the right. Coleman angling to the left. Made the little pump fake to set him up. Nice play. Very nice play. See Freddie coming from the right side. What happens to the defensive backs? Whose responsibility is it? Here comes a guy across the middle. Here he comes, come on, come on. Right there, Freddie Coleman. He kept his balance, he'd have been in that end zone, Kevin. See, you were to what they call a rhythm passer. Nice to get back there and just kind of pump that ball toy with it a little bit. 7-7 score, 331 left. And again, the Huskies knocking on the door. Here's the handoff to Sheehy, and he's stacked up in the line of scrimmage, and he's brought down. Brad Martin just threw that body into the pile and was able to make the stop. Plenty of time. Huskies just take their time. Get some good play calling in down here. It's only second down. Second and goal now for the Huskies. How about Rashawn Sheehy wide right? There's a lot of room to run over there. Olin Krutz is the center up front. Here it gets that 6-5 frame under center. Hands to Sheehy. Goes left side. He's got a man in front of him. He leans forward for the score. Touchdown Huskies and a big block set up by Ben Cadlitz. Ben was leading the way and Rashawn Sheehy just got on board for the ride. And the Huskies take the lead at 13-7. And again, that big offensive line pays dividends as the Huskies score again from the one yard line. Ben Catlett 70, Tony Coates, Cam Cleland, George Kieho, but Ben Catlett's right there 70 as you said Kevin. <laughs> I'd jump on that back too. Oh absolutely. They got all the way to the promised land. Now here's Randy Jones for the extra point. The snap, oh the kick. It's up through the uprights and the Huskies take the lead for the first time this afternoon here in the Wasatch Mountain Range. It's 14 to 7. Huskies leading BYU with 243 left here in the first half of play. First of all, Sonny, good field position by the Huskies. They go six plays, 56 yards, time of possession, two minutes, six seconds. And again, good blocking up front. Good blocking up front. That's what we talked about in the pregame. That's usually going to be the the story byline of any successful offense obviously those guys up front and that's that time you saw the whole left side contribute and block their guy and get in the end zone. Maurice Shaw first with a one yard plunge at the 922 mark to tie it at 7 7 and now it is Sheehy with the score on the back of Ben Cavitz. The extra point applied by Randy Jones in both touchdowns and a 14 to 7 count for the Huskies. Here's Jones the run up and the boot. Got the foot into that one and sends it end over end into the end zone and through the hands of the intended receiver and out of bounds. And so BYU will take it at their own 20 yard line. Now the war of attrition begins. Who's got the best depth? Whose starters are healthy at this point after some just vicious shots out there on the field thus far? And all comes into play here in the closing moments of the first half. 
Let's see what BYU can do when they've taken that five step drop and tried to get it in the pocket. They haven't been very successful at it. Their most success has come when Paul Shoemaker has been able to scramble out. And then when they do a little that little screen pass one thing the Huskies might look for again is that screen pass. Mac Tui Aea along with Josh Smith in that last BYU possession. Really instrumental in stopping the flow. Here's the handoff McKenzie. First starting up the middle and breaks to his left and he is shoestringed and brought down at about the 21 yard line. Making the stop in there from the quarterback spot is Mel Miller assisted over there by Lester Towns. <laughs> well, Tough actually, man. Towns made the, the solo tackle. Nice play. We haven't called his number too much today, but Brian McKenzie, I guess, uh, he has a lot of confidence in himself, as pointed out. He did a little ball hand shift there as he's breaking to the left, and I don't think I'd like to do that with Lester Towns within about two <laughs> yards from him. Split backfield now with Sataki and McKenzie there for the BYU Cougars. And a motion to the right side. This Cahoon, he is yet to catch a ball. Shoemaker deep drop flares it off to the left side delayed screen the catch and the run made by McKenzie and again it is Lester Town stepping up for the tackle along with Jensen there to help out inside the BYU 30 yard line McKenzie now with eight carries for 15 yards has been the focus of BYU's ground attack 14 to 7 score timeout the Huskies lead BYU with a minute 45 left in the opening half of play. With Sonny Six Cutter, Kevin Calabro, and Provo, Utah, Cougar Stadium. 14 to 7 is their score. The Huskies leading the BYU Cougars. 148 left in the first half of play. Third and two. The new quarterback is Paul Shoemaker, six feet, 200 pound junior. Hands off to McKenzie. Now nine carries for about 16 yards, but he's shoestringed and dropped down behind the line of scrimmage. And I don't think it's going to be good enough for the first down. That'll bring up a fourth and about one, maybe two yards for BYU. Chris Campbell makes the stop for Washington. Josh Smith, 99, also getting some good penetration underneath down there, which allowed Chris Campbell to make that stop. Smith again got the man around the ankle and then. Campbell was able to lay the body on McKenzie not allow him to lean and extend the body forward for the first down. It's fourth and two now for BYU. This afternoon a big day for Rashawn Sheehy 10 carries 94 yards and a touchdown as well. I, 42 left in the first half here. I think I followed you on that. BYU's going to punt and it's Hartsfield again. He sends another beauty up there Sonny. And coming down into the hands of Payton. Oh, he avoids a tackler, goes right up the middle. He's at the 40, gets out to the left side to the 50. On his feet at the 40, has a blocker in front of him and was brought down at the 39-yard line of Brigham Young University with 128 left. He's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock. The punter actually had to make the stop, J.D. Hartsfield. One man to beat down the left side. Hartsfield not only delivers a big blow on that boot, but makes the touchdown saving tackle. The BYU Cougar must have closed his eyes. He knew that he had <laughs> Jerome Payton all aced in there, but Jerome with that quickness able to sidestep him and the Huskies had a nice little alleyway set up for him to get get up there and he had a chance to go all the way. I think he made maybe a critical error on the far side. Maybe could have cut back in the middle of the field. The punt traveled 52 yards, but Jerome went 40 yards and the Huskies now have an opportunity at the 42 yard line of BYU. Ewart with a man in motion. Jerzinka to his right side. Drops back, about a five step drop. He slings a pass. Man is open, but a drop ball on the right side in the flat. Down there was Desassure. And he was rattled there by Jack Williams along with Walker coming over from the corner spot. See Brock Ewart. Look right there. Joe Zarzinka, when he decides to turn up field, I don't know if we can get a chance to see it, but he absolutely blew by a defender. Again, Brock's coming off. He's not really waiting that long, which is good. But then again, just a half second longer, two opportunities today, he could have gone a little deeper. Second and 10, with a minute 20 left. Box stopped on the incompletion. 14 to 7. The Huskies lead on two rushing touchdowns, one by Shaw in the first quarter, and one by Sheehy in the second quarter of play. Ewart. With a quick slant pass over to the tight end. First time he's gone that direction to Cam Cleveland. Cleveland rumbles inside the 40 yard line. For Washington. Rumbles or stumbles. That, uh, mm -hmm. You know, need to get the ball a little further downfield. 
Spencer Reed with a tackle for BYU. Third and six now, and under a minute to play in the first half. Look for Ewart to go deep on this one, or maybe just throw it away. He's going to drop back, and he's looking on a little out route. He's got Payton out there, corner of the end zone. Turns, makes the catch. Got it. Down at the two-yard line, a completion. Payton had the man on his back. He spun and got a little room between he and the defender down there, Ben Cook, and makes the catch, backpedaling into the corner. Man, oh man, there was some contact between the two, but no flag, it will stand, and the Huskies with 47 seconds left in the half have a chance to score here, Sonny. Absolutely, Jerome coming in with a, another circus catch, but Jer Brock Hewitt putting the ball where it had to be caught, but he did get away with a little shove down there. Three catches, 84 yards total for Jerome, a 35-yard hookup on that play. Here is Hewitt now from the one, under center. Hand off to Sheehy and a whistle. Sheehy is thrown back. Before the snap, false start on the offense. Offense, false start before the snap. Take a look at the last play here. Third and about six, Ewart back to throw. A lot thoughts, of time. He had thoughts of Jerome all the way, didn't he? Yes, sir. He knew exactly where he was going with that football. Didn't get see it right there, but he kind of separated himself from Ben yes, Cook. He did. <laughs> with the left hand. Well, once they sort out the penalty, I think it's going to move the Huskies back beyond the five yard line of BYU, and they're going to set it up at around the six yard line. I think that's good. Give them an opportunity yeah. to. If you don't get it in there, it takes a lot of time to get out of the pile, get back in the huddle. This way it forces the Huskies to do, be a little more creative. Maybe throw the ball in the air, throw it to a tight end, kill the clock if it's incomplete. And to a lesser extent, it might stretch the defense just a little more. Absolutely. Allow you maybe an opportunity at a pass play with 35 seconds left. 14 to seven score, the Huskies lead this thing. BYU was impressive, very impressive. On their opening drive, they took the ball for seven plays. They scampered 80 yards in three minutes and 51 seconds. And a quarterback keeper from about the half yard mark was good for the score at the 11.09 mark, and BYU had the lead. Huskies have come back. We had talked about it with the good field position, not taking advantage of it. In the last series, they were able to take advantage of it with some big key plays and getting in the end zone. Again, with the big punt return, they've got an opportunity. And what a great momentum boost to go in at halftime if they can get some score. Brock Hewitt on the afternoon, nine completions, 13 attempts, 128 yards. No touchdowns yet, but boy, some big, big pass plays. The one to Payton, of course, just a moment ago. And he also had a, a long completion of 69 yards to Rashawn Sheehy. That set up the first Husky score of the afternoon back in the first quarter 35 seconds left in the half Huskies first down ball resting at the BYU six Hewitt and Sheehy in motion off to the left side nobody else home in the backfield trips to the right side you were back to throw slant pass in for the touchdown the Huskies with you were dropping back throwing it off to the right side and connecting to Freddie Coleman Ah, Coleman with the grab, secures it in the end zone, and the Huskies have a 20 to seven lead. And as it turned out, the penalty might have been to the advantage of the Huskies. Absolutely, again, a little more operating room. Be able to get in that trip set, two set, do set to the right, and put uh, Rashawn Sheehy in motion. It just opens it all up and moves the linebacker's responsibilities over towards that side. And Freddie Coleman, no touchdowns last year, first one this year. Well, and he has really been the object of Ewart's attention this afternoon as well. He's made a couple other fine catches. Here's Randy Jones, the snap and the hold, beautifully done by Shaquoin there, the, the hold, and the kick by Jones is up, splits the uprights, and the Huskies have a 21-7 lead on BYU with 32 seconds left here in this first half of play. The Huskies really pouring it on here in this second quarter. They've done a, an outstanding job offensively with a great combination of play calling by Scott Lenahan and company. Absolutely. Right there, Freddie Coleman just really not giving the defender enough time to get there, and Jason Walker, no chance to break up that pass play. You know, Kevin, I think a lot of it, too, is the substitutions, the offensive line, Huskies, yeah. defense, and getting fresh people in there and 
quite frankly, uh, we worry about our depth, but BYU has less depth than we do. Absolutely. They lost some key people, Steve Sarkeesian, their quarterback, namely. They're two tight end starters last year, now in the pros. Uh, a starting cornerback that is not here because of an honor violation, so they have a lot of holes out there to fill this year for Brigham Young University. If they want to return as the WAC champions, they've won it 18 times under Lavelle Edwards as the head coach, Brock Ewart. With a pass completion for touchdown to Freddie Coleman has made it 21 to 7. Jones will walk up on this and really put the foot into it. Sends it back deep into the end zone. It's caught and it's going to be returned by Snowden. Man, he took a shot <laughs> down around the 15 yard line. Good golly, Miss Molly. That was Hooks actually with uh, the carry, but by the time they separated him from that missile that hit him, he might have been turned into Snowden. Todd Johnson with the stop. Todd out of Bellevue. Todd Johnson and Jeremiah Farms, number four. Good sandwich right there. Two guys have been anxious all afternoon to get a lick on somebody. Oh, man. <laughs> there you go. A lot of pent up angst in that one. All right, the ball resting at the BYU 17 yard line. 21 7 Huskies lead. 25 seconds left first half. No slip ups there. Got a pressure to quarterback. They do. For Shoemaker out of the pocket, throwing on the run. The ball overthrown and a late flag, but I believe a good call. The man going up into the air was Aaron Roderick. And before the ball got there, he took a pretty good shot right between the numbers. And Mel Miller, I believe, was the guilty party down there. It's going to be interference down inside Husky territory. And this one comes with 18 seconds remaining in the first half of play. I'm not sure if they've made their mind up yet. They haven't. It wasn't a catchable ball, so it should be right. Yep, there you go. They're going to wave it off, Sonny. Good call. You hit it right on the head. That ball was way overthrown. That would have been a real opportunity for BYU, but it works to the advantage of the Huskies now because they're going to march that ball back to the original line of scrimmage. And with 18 seconds left, BYU returns back deep into their own territory. Ball resting at the 17 yard line and Shoemaker from the shotgun. First time we've seen him in that formation this afternoon. Shoemaker back to throw. Looking to the left pressure to his right. Throwing out on the flat and complete. That will about do it for BYU here in the half. Going to stop the clock with 13 seconds left. Still time to break one but third and ten now for BYU. Suki Wiggs again applying some pressure. Had that a few times a day. Even with the shotgun formation, he was able to get through and get some pressure on Shoemaker. Look at Suki 67. Little old move coming up in there. Joe Wong not being able to stay with him. Jabari Issa there as well. Jabari played in every game last year except the BYU game. So looking forward to get a piece of the Cougars here. <laughs> 21 to 7 is the count. The Huskies lead 13 seconds left. First half. Shoemaker looking at third and ten. Shoemaker with the handoff to McKenzie, trying to break something right side, and he's dropped down. That should be it, huh, Kev? Will Snowden actually with a carry, and he's dropped down, and that will end the first half of play. 21 7 score, University of Washington leading BYU in Provo. We'll be back. Along with Sonny Six Killer, Kevin Calabro for the start of the third quarter here in Provo, Utah at Brigham Young University. Just a gorgeous campus and a fantastic facility. This is, of course, Cougar Stadium where the check, clocks check, are check, out. Check, 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 <laughs> clocks check. are out. The heat uh, has obviously affected the players on the field and the, the fans. I don't know if that's had any residual effect at all on the clock or not, but uh, the Huskies have a 21 to 7 lead here at halftime uh, with 128 left in the second quarter. The Huskies took over the football and in a four play 40 yard drive that took them just 30 seconds. They completed a pass from Brock Ewart to Freddie Coleman a six yarder for a touchdown to give them the, the margin here 21 to 7 first downs 
Huskies had 11. BYU 6. They didn't have any at all in the second quarter of play. In fact, they had five series, four plays, and out in the second quarter of, of play. A great uh, alignment, if you will, by the uh, Husky defense. Uh, Sonny, they, they made some adjustments there that really paid great dividends. As you can see, BYU as a result held to 29 rushing yards, only 90 yards passing through the air for BYU. As for the Huskies, well, it was uh, quite an afternoon there in that first half of play for uh, Brock Ewart's passing. Ewart, 10 of 14, 134 yards with a touchdown, a 46-yarder, his longest hookup of the afternoon. In terms of rushing yardage, Rashan Sheehy had 10 carries for 94 yards and a touchdown, including a 65-yard beauty in the first quarter of play. Maurice Shaw, four carries, 31 yards, and a touchdown. And Fred Coleman had a carry for 18 yards on the reverse play. Pass receiving. Coleman, four receptions for 38 yards, as long as 24. Jerome Payton, three catches for 84 yards. And Jason Harris had a catch of eight yards. So they got a, a fellow down there right now with a watch hanging around his neck. It's not Danny Ainge, the coach of the Phoenix Suns, BYU alum. He's in attendance here this afternoon. Danny's going to keep track of down and distance. The fellow there you saw a moment ago with the stopwatch around his neck is going to keep track of time here. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not sure how we're up here in the booth going to handle that situation. <laughs> oh, son, you got a stopwatch on I need that a stopwatch. <laughs> so here we go. Huskies will receive the football here to start the second half of plays. Lavelle Edwards bowls things over. Owen Potchman, the freshman from Mercer Island, Washington, steps up, and the left footer lets one fly. And this one's going to go to Jerome Payton deep in his own end zone. It goes off his fingertips and through the end zone, out of bounds. So the Huskies will take possession of uh, their own 20-yard line. No injuries to report in the first half for the Huskies. There were some people that were nicked up. At one point, they were checking the vision of Rashad Sheehy. He apparently is all right, though. The uh, left shoulder of Jason Shorak was in question in the first quarter, but he came back in the second period with some big-time plays and kind of answered those questions. Already, BYU has lost a couple of players. Ellison with a knee and Foreman with a bad knee as well. They're out of the game. First play from scrimmage for the Huskies. Sheehy with it right side, and he is stacked up as he just did get over the line of scrimmage. A pickup maybe of two on the play. Tyler Nelson. 6-3 DB out of nearby Orem, Utah with the solo tackle outside. So it'll be second down, a pickup of two, and eight yards to go for the first half of the Huskies. Huskies five plays, 80 yards, and a TD. You take a look at the possession. Nine plays, 69 yards, blocked field goal. Then they had to punt twice, and then in succession, six plays, 56 yards for the TD. Four plays, 40 yards for the touchdown pass from Ewart to Coleman to make it 21-7. Second and eight for the Huskies. You're at the handoff to Sheehy. Works his way up the middle. Gets a block. Coleman seals off the left side. Freeing Sheehy for the gainer. He's to the 40. 35-30. Could go the distance. He's down to the 10 with blocking. 3-2-1. Do we have a touchdown? No. He was ruled out of bounds at about the two-yard line. Rush on Sheehy. Nearly went the distance. Sensational play as he busts up the middle. Then scoots out to the left side with that incredible speed that the man possesses. Watch him push his offensive lineman out of the way right up there in the hole. Aaron Dalen, get out of my way. I got to scoot. You see Andre Dessischer getting down there, Kevin, to throw a block, which I don't believe he did. But right there, the man he should have blocked knocked him out of bounds. <laughs> Dessischer, a great track man from L.A., did not get himself in a position where he could make the block. Sheehy trying to leap. To close the gap to the goal line was unable to do it. Rashad having a sensational afternoon. 75 <laughs> yards on that pickup for 171 on the day. That's and he'll talk to Andre about that block. <laughs> <laughs> Coleman set up a nice downfield block as well. So here are the Huskies, first and about two to go. And they give off to the right side. And I think it was Wood who might have spun his way into the end zone. Let's see. That's Maurice Shaw into the end zone for the touchdown. Shaw with another plunge off the right side. I believe Reed was the lead blocker in the backfield with him. We'll take a look on the replay. Shaw picks up his second touchdown of the afternoon, set up by a 75-yard gainer from Rashan Sheehy. 
The big boys up front, Kevin, right there, doing their job right there. Great block on Martin at the line of scrimmage. And actually, they thought the wrong guy was in there, Mike Reed, but Maurice Shaw had the ball to the right in the end zone. Randy Jones hits the extra point. The kick is up and good. And Shaw with a couple of touchdown plunges. This one set up by Rashan Sheehy. And the Huskies lead it by a scout account of 28 to 7 early in the second half of play here in BYU. Well, Rashan Sheehy sets off some dynamite here at BYU with an explosive run up the middle to set up the Huskies' fourth touchdown of the afternoon. Take a look at the blocking. Excellent blocking. Owen Crute, 77. Aaron Dana, like we said. Freddie Coleman, wide receiver with a big block. Now, what should uh, Andre Desassure do at this point, Sonny? He's got an angle on the man behind him, but actually, he sprinted too far out in front of him, it looked like. Well, he's also a, a sprinter in his own right, but what he should have done when he looked to the right, pick up the guy that he's most responsible for and let Sean outrun the guy directly behind him. Easy for me to say. <laughs> but, yeah. but that's really what he should have done, is just slowed down and made sure he hit somebody. Didn't want to outrun the football, and, and he did. But Sheehy sets it up for the score, and Maurice Shaw on a great lead block, by the way, from Kiaho. George Kiaho's 5'9", 235, great leverage, low to the ground, gives up the body with a lead block. That allows Shaw to plunge in for the touchdown, and it's 28-7. to Now the Huskies heaping it on BYU right now. The clock is still out. Scoreboard electronically is out, so we will not be giving you time left in the quarter. We'll give you the down and distance as best we can. Running up in the football is Randy Jones. Jones delivers a squib kick high into the air off to the left side. This one just kind of floats at uh, line drive level and finally out of bounds at about the 13 yard line. A new quarterback for BYU. And let's take a look at this youngster, Kevin Paterik. Six feet, 190, sophomore out of Los Alamitos, California. The lefty, more of the pure passer of the two quarterbacks, Kevin. We saw Shoemaker had the ability to get out of the pocket, scramble around, and make something happen. Paterik, I don't believe, has that same ability. So BYU will start things now at about the 35-yard line. As the kickoff floats out of bounds, yeah, they'll spot it at the 35 for BYU. Federick back to throw the lefty looking left and throwing out of bounds overthrown and wisely so because the man was in double coverage out there on the left side Roderick was blanketed out there Nigel Burton's presence forced the quarterback to unload out of bounds so it sets up second and ten now for BYU. Saw a little shot of Paul Shoemaker on the sideline head down. Well nobody knew coming in which quarterback no. was going to they didn't name the starter until two days ago so it's very tightly competition uh, this fall, so who knows? And BYU did not pick up a first down in the second quarter of play. Here's McKenzie trying to get outside, unable to do so. Another sensational stop there made down around the shoe top level. Jason Shorak comes in to just get a hand on the ankle of McKenzie and send him sprawling for no gain. In fact, it might have been a loss of one or two. Look at this, Kevin. Possession for BYU. Very impressive, as you had mentioned, that touchdown after the seven play drive, but after that, nothing. Not, not even a whiff, not even a hint of a first down in the second quarter. Five four and outs for BYU in the second period, which is one reason Lavelle Edwards is make the quarterback in substitution he has. Frederick back to throw, the lefty going out to his right in the flat, pass complete. Here's a man beating the corner out to the right side, getting the first down and more inside of Husky territory Ben Cahoon who we were told would be the target through the afternoon here for BYU makes his first catch of the day Cahoon beat the cornerback outside and then Mel Miller finally had to make the stop deep in his own zone down around the 32. Well Tony Parrish on this play really was a little late getting out in coverage over there as you see it right there he tries to br uh, bring it down a little bit break it down just to get him on the angle with the sideline but he had to commit too soon. I think Tony Parrish forgot where the first down marker was and actually made it play early. 
And a no flag thrown there as two players scuffled a bit. Cahoon and Miller. So Federick, the quarterback, now with a first down at the Husky 32. Big pickup for BYU. Here's a handoff. Oh, Second oh, man Suki. through and is blanketed by Suki Wiggs. He exploded on Will Snowden. He became a part of the family. Good timing on that one by Suki Wiggs. Again, again, he's getting, con uh, excuse me, getting penetration through that BYU line right there. When that guard pulls, he's been filling the gap and he's getting the running back. Second down now for BYU and the ball resting at the Husky 35 yard line. About 14 yards to go. Here's a pass out on the flat. That one just very simply dropped. Delani Sataki out there couldn't put the hands on it. Looks like Jerry Jensen may have gotten a little touch of that too, Kevin. Presence of Jensen probably distracted Sataki a little bit too. Jensen, a large lad, 6'2, 230. The senior from Cascade High School was closing quickly on him. So now it's third down for Brigham Young. Wide to the left side is Ben Cahoon. Rushing yards for the Huskies. Has been the real key for the Spurs. Here's a fumble. Ball jarred loose. Picked up by Miller. Still on his feet. Still on his feet to the 40. Dropped down from behind. Chorak and Mel Miller show blitz. They were all over the quarterback. Marcus Hairston had a hand in there as well in pressuring the quarterback. But it was Miller who made the grab of that fumble <laughs> and scrambled up the field. Looked like one of my divots. <laughs> Good job. It looked like Suki Wiggs again getting penetration through there. And Paterik being that left-hander going the opposite side. Is once once you break that ball away, Kevin, from your body like that and your hands hanging down like, you know, just your hand with the ball, it's easy to knock it out. He's got to learn to put that thing up near his body. Good play by the, the pass rush there of the Huskies. Looked like they brought a couple of linebackers in there. Marcus Hairston made some inroads and was able to get a hold of the quarterback. Here's Ewart now under center taking over at the BYU 40. Give us to Shaw. He tries to rumble up the left side a bit. Stacked up. Leaping on top of the pile on top of his own man was Ole Cruz. That's about 290 pounds falling. Pow! <laughs> right on the back of Maurice. He's on a high though. Shaw's had a couple of plunges from three and one yard out for two touchdowns here this afternoon. The Huskies lead it 28 to 7. We're in the third period. We cannot give you a time. The scoreboard has broken down here this afternoon at BYU. This will be uh, about second and ten. No gain on the play, they say. Ewart under center with Coleman moving left to right now in the slot. They can't off up the middle. Ewart to throw. Looking to the left side. Pass complete out on the flat to Payton. Puts a move. Curls inside of the cornerback and then is hit hard and brought down. But not before he's able to lean forward to about the 23-yard line of BYU setting up another Great situation for the Huskies as they have earned the first down. Obviously, you're going to respect your own pace on speed out there in the corner, being able to hook it up a little bit. Wide up there wasn't a guy within eight yards from no. him. I guess that's an offshoot of getting burned with long gainers from the line of scrimmage. And she, he running that football, and then the long passes from Ewart tend to drop back a little bit defensively. Jeremy Briggs, big backup tight ends in the slot. He's in motion. Now he's going to tighten up there and the whistle. And I think Brock stepped away and might have called the timeout. He did. Timeout Huskies, the score. Washington 28, BYU 7. We're in the third quarter in Provo. 28 to 7 is their score. Washington leading BYU here in the third quarter play with Sunny Six Killer Kevin Calabro on a just a gorgeous day here in Provo, Utah, the opener. For the Huskies right now going very, very well. In the first half, 277 total yards for Washington. BYU 119. BYU a negative eight here in the second half. And that's with a big play. Huskies now first down 10. Ball resting at the 24 of BYU. You are back to throw, man. Wide open over the middle. Sheehy turns and jogs into the end zone for another Husky touchdown. Good golly. <laughs> Unbelievable, he was wide open over the middle. Sheehy 
finally gets his first score of the afternoon after setting up the Huskies all day long. It's like they caught him in a little blitzing situation, Kevin. Right here in the middle, you, you got a running back coming through there, and our linebacker, number 44, Rob Morris, whose ever responsibility it is to pick up the running back. It could have been his, left for Sean Sheehy, wide open for the score. Approximately 23 yard hook up there between the two. The extra point is added by Randy Jones. And the Huskies have a 35 to seven lead right now on BYU. We can't tell you how much time is left here in the third <laughs> quarter because the clock has broken down, but it was interesting during the, the break, Sonny. You were talking about the scorekeeper and how the Huskies have got to keep their eye on the man with that stopwatch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back to pursue that point in just a moment. Huskies lead it 35 to 7. <laughs> 35 to 7 is our score. Brock Ewart, touchdown pass of 23 yards to Rashawn Sheehy and the Huskies. With uh, about five minutes elapsed here in the <laughs> third quarter of play, if I'm reading that clock correctly. 4.15 gone. Now we'll kick off now. The Huskies have got to keep track of the man with the stopwatch. He's standing over on the BYU sideline. Who's over there to make sure? Miles Corrigan is right on that guy's back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> here comes Randy Jones. He'll run up, gets into it. This one's going to float toward the corner taken over at the far sideline and yeah, maneuvering and getting up into the air and then tapped out of bounds at about the 22 yard line over there making the carry was margin hooks and hooks driven out of bounds by the Huskies defense and the special teams and Washington will bring the defense back out there that really made some fine adjustments from the uh, opening drive that BYU put seven points on the board to this point Washington made the kind of adjustments that it just uh, have sh completely shut down BYU 35 unanswered points for Washington but Derek the quarterback the lefty is hit hard for Huskies converge their shore act to lead the party Suki Wiggs looking on Chris Campbell was in the middle of that action when they squeezed him from the outside, left and right, forced him up the middle, and pow, here comes Jason. He had one receiver in mind, and oh. obviously not open. Nice little squish there. That's a little Croatian sensation right there for Mr. Fateric. 35 to 7 the score. Huskies lead big. We're in the third period of play. Fateric back to throw, the lefty looking left. And he under throws his intended receiver out there. Sataki had actually not even made the pivot move to look for that pass on the timing play, and it was on the ground before he even looked back at the quarterback. So BYU in a third down situation. Suki Wiggs with the pressure on the quarterback that time. Suki having a big second half. And the Husky defense and uh, Jim Lambright's coaching on the sideline, they've, they've done a real nice job interchanging their players. One thing we talked about was the BYU lineman being 6'6", Kevin. You come out of that stance. Suki Wiggs has done a good job of staying low and getting that right at the kneecaps and getting upfield. But Derek throws the ball outside again on the left side. And it's, I don't believe, going to be enough for a BYU first down. Dustin Johnson making the catch out there on the wing. And the Huskies again hold BYU in check. BYU did not get a first down in the second quarter, and they have it here in the third period either. But Tarek got smashed again right after he delivered the football. Looked like Marcus Hairston was in there. Harris did a great job to first make contact and then hang on, bring the man down. One thing to make contact, oftentimes you bounce off, but Harris was able to wrap his arms around him and bring him down in a good open field tackle to force the punt now by BYU. Jarzinka's back to receive for Washington. Hartsfield with a high boomer. Well, he's hit some beauties today. Jarzinka. Fields it and has dropped down. Good tackle down there made by the special team unit. Derek Stevenson, the junior from Diamond Bar, California, brings Joe Jarzinka down to his knees. Great tackle. Huskies will pick the ball in play on their own 27, first and 10. 
Stewart didn't have a chance to put any moves or anything into that one. Just make the catch, secure it, and then pow, take the look at 6 3 has elapsed here in this third period of play. Like our high tech clock there. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> have, to, have to pay that scorekeeper a talent fee for using his thumb there on the on the clock. All right, Huskies take over. They're in a groove right now at their own 27 yard line. First and 10, leading 35 to 7. You're at the handoff to the second man, stumbling off to the right side of Shaw. He's hit and stacked up, driven back, but not before he maybe picked up a yard on the play. Rob Morris with the tackle from the line backing spot. Good time for the Huskies to get a nice sustained drive going. They've had so many big plays, Kevin, they haven't been able to burn the clock. This week, opportune time, do some solid running plays, short passes, eat up the time here in the third quarter. Maybe by fourth quarter, take a look at some of the young talent that's on that bench. They have a freshman by the name of Adam Tate, 6'2 and 215, who might see a little action there in that fourth quarter at the uh, back position. Here's Ewart now. Takes the handoff to Shaw, looking left, slants a pass over the middle. It's going to be caught by Payton at the 50 yard line. Then he's dropped back at about the 49. Progress was stopped at the 50. The Huskies pick up the first down and they continue to churn up the yardage by the air. Ben Cook with a stop, Sonny. I think Jerome wanted to go for a little bit further yardage. <laughs> I think he's mad at himself for what he did there. He tried to do a little stop and then a little sidestep move that he's done earlier in the ball game. He's so quick, he's, he should have just turned his burner on right here and just took off. Saw number 13 coming in, thought he could elude him and couldn't do it. Reggie Butler now the receiver on the slot to the left side. He's the man in motion. Make that Reggie Davis, beg your pardon. Here's the handoff, Ewart to Shaw. Up the middle he goes. Beats the first line of defense and then is dropped down by a linebacker at the 41 yard line. Jason Walker with the stop. The ball carrier for the Huskies. Jason Walker on the I tell you, it's uh, the, not only the, the weather today with the heat, but also the substitutions the Husky coaching staffs have made. You look at the BYU, it could be the score too, Kevin, being down 35 7, but they just don't look like they've got the old zip they had getting in that first half. They got a lot of retooling to do, and they've got Arizona State next weekend, so it doesn't get any easier for them. Payton off to the near side. Red Coleman left side. The lone back is Shaw. Play action. Ewer to throw. Goes up top. Has Payton in the end zone. Overthrew him slightly. And incomplete. Didn't allow. He didn't lead him enough with his speed going from right to left in an angle you've got to just lay it out there there's no there was no safety help it was one on one lay it out there and let him go to it Jack Williams the cornerback in coverage and he's been one of the bright spots today for Lavelle Edwards defense Williams stepping in for a starter and Ewart says ah, I just missed with that one lead the man lead the man yeah. <laughs> Boy, they have been working all summer long waiting for this moment so it's third down for the Huskies and about one. You were with two men in the backfield. Pat Conniff, rookie from Woodenville, is the lead man in the backfield. Here's the handoff to Pat. He's going to wriggle his way forward for the first down. And he was set up by a real nice block in there. Brad Hutt looked like he set a nice pick there to allow Pat Conniff to wriggle his way up the middle. And we're talking about the, the depth and the youth of the Huskies. Here's a good one. Conniff, a teammate of the backup quarterback, Tuyasa Sopo. Pat Connor from Woodenville High School gets the Huskies the first down. You can tell he's been well coached, a lot of natural ability. He hits the stack, but he keeps those legs driving, allowing him to pick up the first down with the good blocking. Benji Olson right there as well. Ben Cablitz to free some ground for him. Davis in motion. Here's the handoff. Comes to Shaw. He was stacked up, backed off a little bit, and then leans forward. And was able to get to the line of scrimmage. So it'll bring a second down and about nine yards for the Huskies with the ball resting on the uh, BYU 36 37 yard line. Coach Lamb right there. Got to be real happy the way the offense has performed and the defense that specifically today has shut down BYU. And Bright looking on at his 364th Husky football game is either a player, assistant coach, or coach. And that's nearly 40% of the games the Huskies have played. The history of their 
program he's been a part of. And this will go down as a one that I'm sure is going to be memorable. 35 to seven, the Huskies lead right now. And time running down on BYU. And the way that defense, the Husky defense has been stingy and the way the dogs have been able to grind out that ground game, it's gonna be very difficult for BYU to claw their way back into this one. Next weekend, San Diego State, the Aztecs coming to town. Husky Stadium, the Aztecs put some points on the board. They've got an air game. That should be a fun one next weekend. Man in motion, Joe Jarzinka. Coleman off to the near side, flanked out. Payton to the left side. Ewart looking up the middle. Cam Cleland has the reception, and he has rolled down at the 18-yard line. Jason Walker with the stop coming over from his safety position. That might be his first reception of the day, I think, Kevin. And uh, he's been spending most most of his afternoon blocking for all those running backs. Rashawn Sheehy, Marie Shaw. Here he gets an opportunity, just going up. Nice little clearing route in the middle. That's a little mismatch in size, I'd say. Well, and the scouts really love Cleveland, I'm told. 6'4", 275 senior from Seed Row Willie. He was second on the team in receptions last year with 23. Much along the lines of uh, Mark Bruner or uh, Ernie Conwell. Man, they love Conwell in St. Louis, don't they? Dick Vermeil just loves the game. Here's a handoff to Shaw. Nice tackle in the backfield. He's tripped up. Morris got him down around the ankles for no gain. Second down. Second down for Washington, but they are deep in BYU territory. Chewing up some time on the clock. Few Ball. new kids in there. Ball down at the 20. Yeah, now here's a real opportunity for Washington. They brought 71 players on this trip, and 10, I believe, were true freshmen. And many of them are going to get some time. Payton and Coleman are the wideouts. Shaw, the man in the backfield. The solo back. Davis, the H back. Here's the handoff to Shaw. Straight on going right side. Was unable to fight off the tackler. Coming up to make the stop from the linebacking spot, Spencer Reed. No gain on the play. Third down now for Washington. <laughs> Olin, Olin Cruz has been chewing up with the, uh, or jawing with all those down linemen all day right here with Rob Morris, 44. Good shot at him, blocking on him right there, and actually just knocked him to the ground. And he must have just laid on him because Rob Morris got up not real happy. Four minutes now left in the third quarter. Is that correct? Four minutes? Yeah, that was the indication we got from the official just a moment ago. Four minutes left in the third quarter. The scoreboard is broken down, so there's no indication of clock or down or distance up on the board. But uh, we do have a third down situation we can tell you with the ball resting at the BYU 20 yard line. Brock Hewitt is the quarterback from Chihuahua. The sophomore drops back, deep drop, little flare left side. They set up Cleveland, fakes left, shakes to the middle to the near hash mark. He's able to stumble his way ahead and get beyond the line of scrimmage. A little screen pass to the left side, picks up maybe two or three yards on the play, but not enough, obviously, for the first down. So the Husky field goal unit now will come on. And so Randy Jones now will get his first opportunity. Actually, his second opportunity at a field goal today. He hit one as time expired in the first quarter. They ruled that out. They changed ends. And then when he kicked to begin the second quarter of play, the field goal was blocked. So we'll get another opportunity here. From about the 22, the boot is up. Jones indicating he did not hit it, and he didn't. He must have pulled it to the left side. So, just under four minutes remaining in the third so the Huskies game unable game to score game. here, but they still lead by a bundle. Up 35 to 7 with just a few minutes left here in the third period in Provo, Utah. So the Huskies 0 for 2 in field goal attempts this afternoon, and BYU will take it at their own 20-yard line. Viterek spins, hands off, and rumbling off left tackle for a gain of maybe six on the play. Was Sataki the stop on the play made by Tony Parrish coming up from his free safety position. Nigel Burton there as well from the rover spot for Washington. 35 to 7 the Huskies lead BYU. Sataki has some trouble with the headgear and comes <laughs> off. Not happy with it. But Tarek the quarterback with 
two receivers left side. The man in motion is Cahoon. Back to throw, the lefty Patera. Oh, he just swarmed and then knocked down. And again, another fine shoestring tackle in there. A play applied. Uh, Jason Shorak was in there and Todd Johnson as well. Johnson makes the initial stop. Good play. Yeah, Todd's had a couple good hits today. One on that kickoff return That's with right. Jeremiah Farms. And here he gets a chance. He just kept move, moving back and moving back. The guy had position on him on the block, but his power just kept going upfield. But Tarek's starting to look around. Who are these guys? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Those are his own guys. <laughs> <laughs> Two sacks this game for the Huskies. They've been relentless. The Tarek in shotgun position. Will throw out to the left side. Cahoon has the first down and maybe a yard extra. Then he is rammed and knocked out of bounds. Todd Johnson over there again with assistance from Mel Miller. Very nice move by Ben Cahoon here on Mel Miller. Uh, Mel Miller thought he was going deep. He broke it off and it was right at the first first down marker. And that might be the first down that BYU has garnered since the first quarter. I believe it is. The Huskies. Set up along that front line with some stunts. Viterek after the first down is going to go back and drop this pass off to the near flat. Down there in contention. A couple of players all over each other. Turi Butler was the defender. And Margin Hooks was the intended receiver. They were clinging to each other as that ball was up for grabs right in front of Jim Lambright. He's given the sideline official his perspective of that play. <laughs> Teray Butler was in great position on this throw. And it's a question of whether the receiver Margin Hooks was trying to go for the ball, but it looked to me like he had a hold of Teray's shoulder pad or helmet. Brigham Young now second and ten. The ball at their own 31 yard line. 35 to 7 the score. The Huskies lead big. But Derek has a man to his right hand side. Now he's got a man open in the flat left side. He'll complete the pass. And another first down for BYU. Dustin Johnson, the 6 2 tight end from Eager, Arizona, makes the catch. And BYU now is on the move. They get it up to their own 45. But Tarek had too much time to deliver the football and he looked like he was look he looked at least four receivers finally found Dustin Johnson open wide open and uh, Husky still have to maintain that pressure on him. Parrish along with Miller out there on the, the left side in the defensive backfield. Look at Townsend set up uh, here on make that Todd Johnson set up on the right side trying to slant in. Two defenders though blocking the pass is pitched out on the right side and quickly the stop made over there by Mel Miller before Ben Cahoon could think about where to turn to next and that might have been a loss of one there on that play. Very nice hit. Mel Miller making up for the last time a receiver got open on him. This one caught it but he made him pay for it. Yeah you're right Todd Johnson <laughs> he wants to get to that quarterback at the bottom of the screen. They pick it up beautifully. Yes though, didn't they, they did. Double teamed him out there. Shorak on that front line now, along with Suki Wiggs. Nigel Burton in there trying to get a little piece of the action. Back to throw for Terry. Scrambling after him and nearly dropping him to his feet. A couple of DBs. The pass did get to a, a man up front, but Shorak comes in and just puts the monster mash on the receiver out there, Will Snowden. Snowden just trying to come back to his quarterback because he was pressured out of the pocket. Looks like the Husky coaching staff uh, hurt us up here because they've been putting a lot of pressure coming up. Jeremiah Farms with the little blitz up the middle. Good job by the quarterback to get rid of the football but Jason Chorak right where he needed to be. So BYU is Backed up now to their own 38 yard line. They'll have the ball second and many trailing 35 to 7 when we return in a moment. <laughs> 35 to 7 our score as we begin the fourth quarter of play here in Provo, Utah. The, the Huskies scored twice in the third quarter of play. Rashan Sheehy 
on a 75-yard run from scrimmage. Set up Maurice Shaw for a three-yard plunge to make it 28-7 after Randy Jones added the extra point. Then Brock Ewart went to work on a subsequent possession with a touchdown pass to Rashawn Sheehy, his first touchdown of the afternoon. Covered 23 yards to make it 35-7. New quarterback sent in to begin the second half for Brigham Young. Young Fateric and Marcus Tullius Asopo. Very well could come in here to play a quarter of Husky football. The freshman highly touted player of the year in the state of Washington from Woodenville High School. And as Jim Lambright told me at practice earlier this week, Sonny, I asked him about freshmen. I said, are you the kind of coach that will play young talent. He says, absolutely, you have to play these young freshmen. Number one, you don't know when they're going to leave school because they're <laughs> very talented people. They may leave a ahead of time. And number two, it's a signal to the incoming guys and the people you're recruiting, young talent will play. Oh, here's a great pass play. Thrown up for grabs down the left side and a touchdown. Aaron Roderick beat his man down the left sideline. Ture Butler was in coverage on the left side. And Roderick got away from it. Fateric led him beautifully, throwing, arcing a pass out to the sideline from the shotgun position. It's hard to imagine you can get beat straight downfield like this with a third and extremely long situation, but Ture did. Excellent pass, a great catch. I think Ture hurt himself on the play. Yeah, Butler fell to the left shoulder, and the team trainers out to attend to him. So it's a 35 14 ball game and right off the get go BYU scores here to begin the period. And as they attend to Mr. Butler will go away come right back with a culmination of this ball game in a moment 35 13 the score the Huskies lead BYU. Well a very very nicely thrown ball and the route run by Aaron Roderick for a touchdown goes 62 yards. Here's the point after knocked down by the Huskies. They can return it and the ball is live the ball being juggled the ball up for grabs the ball being scooted ahead Miller's got it. He can break away from the tackler and go his ball <laughs> knocked away the ball being kicked ahead booted ahead. And it is finally out of bounds down there in front of the BYU sideline. The Huskies just try to move the ball ahead. A live ball and a great play by the special teams. They had to just keep the ball alive and move it down the field. And now Washington has possession of the football. At midfield, it appears. Watch the extra point now. Mac to Iaia. Mac comes <laughs> up with the ball. He's going to hand off. Knocked away. Nigel Burton out there. No, it's knocked away. Who wants it? Who's going to get it? Miller. Here comes Miller. <laughs> Potsman after him. Brings him down like a steer at the fair. <laughs> He's trying to advance the ball. Can't do it. And finally kicked out of bounds. By who was that? Was that she after the football? Jermaine Smith. Smith, yeah. Lester Towns was shaken up on that play. Lester probably just got dizzy from watching that ball go round and round. And they're right now taking a look at the left shoulder, Lester Towns. Scoring drive for BYU, eight plays, 80 yards, three minutes, 39 seconds. Roderick, a 62 yard touchdown pass reception. It's 35 13, Washington. And uh, in actuality, uh, the Huskies will not get the ball from that that spot. The, uh, for it is a live ball, however, and could have advanced it for a touchdown. Now they will bring it back and the kickoff for BYU. They thought, uh, along with Jarzinka, the duo set up in tandem to receive. And BYU, Let's see if they'll just try to squib the ball off the tee here. Send a line drive into the middle of the field. The middle of the field is open. Let's see what Hoxman will do. He'll let it fly. We'll back up Payton in his own end zone. Jerome will hold. He'll let BYU special teams extend themselves down the field, then we'll drop to a knee. And Washington will start things at the 20 yard line. Let's see if Marcus T 
come out as a starting quarterback. He will not. Brock Ewart will come out for the Husky first unit. Don't want to get them hot with a lot of time left as a passing team and get Brock out there. It's 35-14. Maybe they can get something to happen and get the ball downfield. Toyasa Sopo continues to warm up on the sideline, anticipating some, some action here this afternoon, but it will be Brock Ewart as the quarterback. Ewart has had a very, very nice day with a couple of touchdown passes. Sheehy in the third quarter of play to make it 35-7. Here's Ewart, the handoff, muscling off to the right side and picking up a gain of about four yards on the play. Jason was Jason Harris. Cloud start to form overhead here in the Wasatch Mountain Range. It was an absolutely blistering afternoon yesterday. It rained overnight, cooled it down a bit. At game time at 1.30, though, we had bright sunshine at about 90 degrees. It's cooled down quite a bit now. Well, the Huskies have brought in some linemen to get some experience here in this fourth quarter, leading 35-13. We'll get the substitutions for you in a minute. Hewitt, play action, throwing out of the flank. Haith on the intended receiver, makes the catch. Muscles his way ahead, leans between two defenders and is dropped down at his own 41-yard line. A lot of respect out there for Jerome Payton. BYU defenders give him all kinds of room. Good route run by Jerome and Brock Hewitt with a lot of time to deliver the football. You get a big guy in there, Kevin, at 6'5", and got that big, rangy, strong arm. And it's, a, it's a nice route. He can deliver the ball 15, 20 yards downfield. Payton with a career high, 140 yards gained through the air on six receptions today. Great afternoon. That summer of hard work's paid off today. Buart's going to check at the line. Here's the give. And the man up the middle. Leaning forward for a gain of one again is Jason Harris. Jason Harris, the ball carrier. Harris is six feet, 205, and a junior. And as we mentioned, they have an abundance of talent in that position. Rashad Sheehy, Maury Shaw, who's picked up a couple of touchdowns today, and a freshman by the name of Adam Tate. Got two new tackles in there, too. Chad Ward, right tackle, and Elliot Silvers, who had a tremendous spring and uh, really came and got banged up a little bit this fall. But last spring, he had a great spring game blocking against Jason Chorak, and uh, good to see them in the ball game. And they're both freshmen. Ward, a true freshman, and Silver's a redshirt freshman. You're back to throw, looking to the right side, slants a high one, timing play, Payton under it, makes the catch, hauled out of bounds. Made the catch, and then just did step out of bounds, but he's deep into BYU territory. They're gonna mark that ball at the 32-yard line of the Cougars. So it'll be first in town Huskies. You see Paterik on that last series for BYU thread the needle and throw a perfect pass downfield. Here's a chance to look at Brock Heward, left-hander throwing to the right side of the field and simply went out and up and Jerome Payton, perfect strike. Now we just mentioned he's over 140 yards with a career high and boy, he just added a nice lump sum there. Desassure the wide out now. The Former trackster from L.A., the junior, wide out to the left side. Jarzinka man in motion. One man in the backfield. That is Shaw. Here's the handoff. Make it Harris off to the left side. He's brought down. Looked like they had the face mask of Harris as they spun him around and dropped him at about the 27-yard line. No flags on the play, but a pickup, maybe a three or four on the play. That's where you want to be if you're a big guy out there pushing and shoving all afternoon in 90 degree heat. You want to be in a cool zone. When you're not out on the field, you want to be in that zone. Dick Baird's over there in the cool zone. Hey, I heard him say zone. He's charting some plays over there. Huskies lead here by a count of 35 to 13, but they want more. Hewitt in a second down situation and about seven. Davis in motion. You were back to throw. He's got a man going deep to the end zone. It's Coleman for the touchdown. Beautifully run route by Freddie Coleman. You were dropped back, lobbed it into the end zone for his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. Beautifully done with great precision. You were to Coleman for another Husky score. Freddie is really going on it. No touchdown reception last year. Today, too. Way to start the season. 
He ran a man magnificent route. He broke in and then went his corner post route. No way that Ben could stay with him. Number 30 for BYU. Randy Jones now with the extra point. Here's the boot. And it's up the good. extra point kick is good. So the Huskies tack on another seven and they lead it 42 to 13 with time remaining here in the fourth quarter. Coleman has scored on the third touchdown pass of the afternoon thrown by Brock Ewart. We'll be back. Forty two thirteen and an exquisite day today for Fred Coleman as Sonny mentioned. Did not have a touchdown reception last year. He's got two on the afternoon. Brock Hewitt has picked up three touchdown passes today. His career best of four against Oregon State last year. He has also amassed 285 yards total from the air. His career high is 311 in a single game, and that was against Arizona last year. So a big day for Brock Hewitt up top. Receivers making the catches and converting. And a 42-13 lead right now for Washington. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo continues to warm up on the sideline. Here is the kickoff, and it is recovered in the end zone with some tribulation by the BYU Cougars. And the man making the catch and the carry is Jaron Dabney from Sealy, Texas, a freshman. He had to get around the official in the end zone to make the catch. And finally is run out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. So for you Husky fans here now is an opportunity in this fourth quarter with the Huskies leading 42 13 to take a look at the depth of Washington. And it's quite extensive and we do have a clock running now apparently. Well they've got the numbers up there anyway 42 13 and they'll adjust the, the clock in a moment. But Tarek back to throw forced out of the pocket forced to the line of scrimmage loops it ahead and completes a pass for I believe a first down. Nice catch. Good job by Paterick to scramble out of there. Dustin Johnson with the catch. Tony Parrish with the tackle and a first down for BYU. Two Huskies were in position to make the grab of Paterick, but he has eluded them and just like Shoemaker earlier, scrambles out and nice little lofty little touch pass. He seems uh, small by comparison to the 6'5". The Stature and 225 pounds of Brock Hewitt. Paterick is six feet and 190, a sophomore. And he is extremely quick. Working from the shotgun now. Low snap. Grabs it around the ankles. Makes a quick handoff over there to Sataki, and he's able to lean forward to the line of scrimmage. Boy, he is knocked down over there by Marcus Hairston. <laughs> I haven't seen Lester Towns since he took a pretty good lick on the shoulder a few plays back. Pearson's in there along with Jensen at the linebacking spot. Jeremiah Farms has seen some action there as well. Clock is still malfunctioning. Thus, man with the big thumb there. <laughs> Here's Kateri. Now dropping back with flags fly. And somebody moving on the line of scrimmage. Huskies in firm command of this one, lead 42-13. BYU actually started the game Ball in their opening drive with a touchdown. False start Five on the early. offense. Still second down. Charge to BYU is still second down. But they'll march back the yardage and send BYU's line of scrimmage to about the 34. We're here today. The Huskies lead it 42 to 13. Paterek back to throw, forced out of the pocket. Scrambling off to the left side, throws back to his right. Difficult pass for the lefty to make. Complete pass, but juggled by the receiver. Live ball up for grabs. And recovered finally by Snowden of BYU at his own 44-yard line. So when the play culminates, it's a pickup of about six yards on the play. It looked like you were going to have great pressure by the Huskies, but both defenders knocked into each other, allowing Paterick to get outside. One thing the BYU quarterbacks usually do when they're on the run, the way the routes are set up from them, he knows where the open guy is. And that time he found the one right in the middle. Unfortunately, he coughed it up and lost some yardage, but it was a good job by Paterick to find it. Third down now, and about five yards. The ball placed down at the near hash mark at the 45. 
The Turk, the signal caller, drops back, looking right now, left. Steps up in the pocket as a man slanting over the middle, and the pass dropped. Catchable ball dropped over the middle. In coverage was Jensen. The intended receiver was Dustin Johnson. And so BYU will have to punt it away. J.D. Hartsfield, a newcomer, a JUCO transfer from Glendale, Arizona. He has sent some beauties into the rarefied air here at Provo this afternoon. He had a boomer in the first half for 65 yards. Jarzinka back at his own 10. Here's the boot. High wobbler. Joe settles under it, makes the catch, and is immediately hauled down at the 15-yard line. Didn't and a flag. No, nope. Been all over. Little Joe, he likes to take those gambles. People love him for it, but I'm not so sure the Husky coaching staff likes him doing that. 10 minutes and 25 seconds. 10 minutes and 25 seconds, we're told, remaining here in the ball game. The Huskies in firm command of this one, 42-13. Looks like Marcus Tuyasasopo is going in on this series, Kevin. Marcus has spent uh, a lot of time, as we understand it, pouring over films, playbooks, working out with the Husky players this summer. Ooh, Jawarren Hooker, another freshman. Mm -hmm. Hooker is... Uh, an absolute speed burner. 5'11 freshman from Ellensburg, Washington. Patrick, holds, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Kevin. Yeah, holds the state records for 100, 200, and 400. He is number four. Watch him on the near side of your screen. Tuyas Asopo now will come off the field. And we'll confer with Bill Dietrich on some play calling here. It's interesting. Scott Lanahan sits up in the press box here along with Randy Hart, the defensive coordinator. Lanahan will relay the plays. As I'm told, down to Bill Dietrich. In communication, obviously, with the head coach. Lambright down on the sidelines, and then the plays are sent in to the quarterbacks. Now, how often will a young quarterback get an opportunity to call his own shots, Sonny? They're going to tell him what the plays will be. He'll have checks to make, Kevin, but he, uh, he is directed from Bill Dietrich on the sideline what play they will run. If BYU jumps up and does something that they have a check off on, he has that call. There's another receiver in there, Patrick Reddick, number 27, another freshman. Very highly on that young man. Ewart comes up with better than 285 yards this afternoon. Fell short of his 311, a career high, said last year. And his three touchdowns, one shy of tying his career high of four against Oregon State last year. So very big game for Brock Ewart today. It will be the freshman's turn now to step in and display his skills. A number of freshmen out there, as Sonny just pointed out. Definitely some speed at wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hooker is an intriguing case. Uh, he owns the fastest 100 in state history at 10.27 over there at Ellensburg. And he is lined up off to the near side. Marcus with the handoff up the middle. That's Harris scooting ahead off the left side for a gain of a couple. That's always a confidence builder. You got the first snap from center, didn't fumble it, made the handoff. <laughs> <laughs> now we go from there. Now he's all right. Rob Morris with a stop. Riddick will come off. We're told it's Riddick's birthday, and it's also Sonny Six Killer's birthday. And you, you got a few years on, on Mr. Riddick, though. <laughs> a few. 39 to what, 18? Yeah, yeah Riddick, 5'9 freshman <laughs> out of Newberry Park. California. It's been, I'd say, about 50 years since you ate one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Toyasa Sopo, the quarterback. Man in motion, Reggie Davis. Spins in the handoff to Harris off the Davis. Pick outside. Nice play. That block freed him for about three yards on to carry off to the right side. Good lead block, man in motion. Good job here, Marcus. Good hand. Jason Harris bouncing it outside. Brad Hutt, again, making a great block out there on the end, allowing him to gain some extra yardage, get up to close to the first down. Reggie Davis does a nice job. 6'3", 230 junior. Good lead block that time. They got him listed as a tight end. They've used him in the backfield in the slot on that tight end position as the H back. Very interchangeable type guy, very versatile. From the far hash mark, Marcus Toyasasopo, the handoff to Harris. 
churning his legs high, leans back with a good second effort and muscles his way to about the 26. And I think they're going to give him the first down. Getting back to Reggie Davis, that's a guy that Lambright really wanted to get on the offensive side. Defense, he said he was a little more, you know, not not real natural. And so now in offense, they can find all kinds of places to play him. Well, they are just shy of the first down. I thought Harris had moved his way up across that marker, but they're going to bring the ball back to about the 24 yard line. Not enough for the first down. So a quick exhibition offensively for the Huskies. Sean O'Laughlin trying to limber up that leg for the punt. Here's an end over end punt that's going to carry once it hits the ground, but it's going to wobble sideways and roll out of bounds to about the 35 yard line. And that's where BYU will start things up. They trail big here, 42 to 13. The uh, Cougars were mentioned in some polls as being as high as number 19 in the country. And of course, some AP pollsters had Washington number one in the country preseason. They've been in the top five in most polls this year. 42 13, the score in the fourth quarter from BYU. We'll be back with more. Well, the Huskies lead big here 42 13 at BYU, and the Provo faithful go trooping off. Next weekend, BYU will be at Arizona State. Rashad Sheehy has. Roses on his mind, literally. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a big day, hasn't he? That's nice. Nice haircut. I like that. 171 yards for Rashad. Couple of TDs. One on the ground, one through the air. There's Rashad with a smile. Looking forward to just a big year. Shaw had a very good day too, with the 12 rushes for 49 yards and a touchdown, or two touchdowns. She he actually just had the one TD, and that was on the. Touchdown reception at 23 yards. But Tarek, the quarterback, the number two on the depth chart, started the second half throwing out and left flat, complete little button hook spin, losing the defender over there is Cahoon, and then he is wrapped up as the rest of the Husky secondary converged on him. Ture Butler over Nelson there, make it Nigel Burton with the stop. This is the dogs of 97 right here, fellas. <laughs> You guys worked hard today, Jensen and Chorak. Yes, he did. And that one, Brock Ewart, the big day. What an arm. Man, what an arm. 18 to 23, 285 yards, three touchdowns. No interceptions, no picks. And we were just talking about earlier, one, one sack and not many pressures that we can remember. Here's a pass over the middle. The Huskies kind of spread their defense a little bit, and BYU throwing under the coverage. Pass complete over there to Cup, and Nigel Burton with a stop. Seven minutes left in the ball game. Jason Shorak's gotten his share of national media. Real nice piece done by ESPN this morning. Mike Adamley, Adamley with a shirt and tie, dress pants on, trying to bring Shorak down with a, a series of blocks. Shorak just shed him though, <laughs> didn't he? Yes, he just did. Just like a mosquito, just threw him to the ground several times. It was a nice piece. You gotta love it when the uh, the players throw the announcers to the ground. Here's the Terry. Careful. Flat left side. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't get that opportunity very often. They relish that. Todd Johnson with a good open field play. I tell you that that kid's been on in some plays here in the second half. Johnson, he, he keeps things live back there. Well, he's been around the program for a while, being a senior this year. He has been special teams as well as playing some good linebacker play today. Bell Edwards, you got to believe there have been better days in his 26 years as head coach here at BYU. He doesn't change his expression, though, no, whether he he's up by 40 or down by 30. <laughs> he doesn't. 42 13 count, Huskies lead. But Tarek back to throw in a second long situation. Scrambling, scrambling, scrambling. Defenders diving at him. Finally, he throws outside. Eslin's going to be intercepted. The pass intercepted. Running with it is Tony Parrish. He moves his way and the pile with him to about the 43 yard line. Tony Parrish, big time play there. That ball was up for the grabs and Parrish just kind of laying back in the weeds, Sonny. Uh oh, he called a penalty. Looked like it could have been roughing the passer. But you're right though, Kevin. You know, you only have so much time and so long and the safeties are gonna be down there sitting there. 
It's Chris Campbell with great pressure on the quarterback forcing him to the sideline. That didn't look like a late hit to me. He didn't play this week because they got Central Florida next week. They played Akron and Central Florida. Here, Miles Corrigan over there talking to the timekeeper. <laughs> Trying to confuse him by some Central Florida game. Yeah. <laughs> Roughing the passer <laughs> against the defense. He went to his head with his helmet. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Roughing the passer on that play is the call, so it negates the, the pickoff by Parrish. Gives BYU the football back and puts him into a great position here at the Husky 34 yard line. Let's take a look at the play again. Could be Lester Towns, yep. Oh boy. Lester may have had one of those last year as well. I told him before the season that, you know, knock those things off. Shoulder right up into the chin of Paterik apparently was the problem. Right to the head. Paterik dropping back in the pocket, looking to the left. Now to the right. He's got Cahoon in the end zone and a touchdown. And again, it was Mr. Butler victimized by Ben Cahoon. Paterik just going back and looping it toward the post. And there's Ben Cahoon with a TD. And it's 42-19 Huskies. Good route again, Ben Cahoon, but I, I have to question, you know, you, BYU is going to be throwing the ball deep. Looks like Teray Butler here kind of bit on a little hesitation move. Made up some space there, but not enough. Hartsfield for the Point after the kick is good and it's a 42 to 20 ball game. We'll take a break and return. Huskies still lead big here in Provo, Utah, deep in the fourth quarter. Well, BYU hanging in there, being very competitive, has closed it within 22 points. 42 to 20 is the score. We're in the fourth quarter of play. Run up and the kick is sent off to the sideline and it's fielded over there by Payton. Skirts across the width of the field trying to turn the corner. Nice bump made out there by Davis to free him along the left sideline, but he's hit and uh, knocked down. Payton has the Huskies to about their own 28 yard line where they begin their work. Leading here by 22 points. And that was a tough play just a moment ago. Paterik. Going up top to Ben Cahoon for the touchdown, covered 34 yards. That coming after a penalty for roughing the passer. And on that play, the ball had been picked off. However, possession given back to BYU in good field position, and uh, they wasted no time to put another seven on the board. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, the quarterback. His father Manu played at UCLA, played the pros for the Niners and the Hawks. Hands off right side. Harris tripped up in the backfield. Managed to lean forward for a game, maybe a one on the play. Huskies need to make a few first downs here, Kevin. Do something positive. Last time it was three and out. I'd like to see Ojuwarren Hooker just maybe go deep once, <laughs> just to see the throw. Or this man, Pat Reddick, five nine freshman from Newberry Park, California. Let's take a look at the time. Nine minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the game, and the Huskies leading 42 to 20. Just as sure as the wide out left hooker wide right man in motion is Reddick. Dubs to the left side. Here's the handoff going to Harris. Weaves his way ahead for the first down. Maybe more legs churning up high. He maneuvers to the 50. Moves the pack inside the BYU territory to about the 49 yard line. Jason Harris, good looking back. Yes, absolutely. They're, they're pretty deep at running back right now. Jason Harris. Has the ability to break the big one. He did hit the hole. He was going full board. There's no doubt about that. See Rob Morris here, the middle linebacker, trying to get in there and make a play. Okay. Tell you what, these backup linemen are doing a fine job. The starters for BYU still in the ball game. Elliot Silver's in there on the left side, along with Brad Hutt, number Five 51. Minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. Huskies lead it 42 to 20. Marcus Tullius is so cool with the handoff. To Harris this time getting the body down low and lunging ahead for a pickup of a couple. 
Brings up a second down in about eight situation. Reddick and Jerzinka will step back in. Dessa Shure will come out. Along with George Reed. Harris with 10 rushes already and 44 yards. Can't beat that over four yards of carry. Well, unless you're Rashawn Sheehy. <laughs> yeah. Big game. That was Mike Reed. I said, I believe I said George Reed. Mike Reed coming out. Marcus Julius Asopo checks at the line. Here's the handoff. Harris trying to straight arm his way out of trouble. Can't. Gang tackled and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. So a throw for loss of about two yards. And this will bring up a second down situation and 10. About 11 yards. Wonder if we'll Morris. see the first pass of Marcus Tuyasa Sopo's career here. Third down. Third and 11, they're calling it now. Hooker will step out. And will come Fred Coleman. Which leads me to believe that he would be the intended receiver. Mike Reed is in as well, along with Jason Harris in the backfield. Reed will be the H back. Now the official will halt the Huskies as they come to the line of scrimmage. A lot of Husky people here today in Provo, Utah. A lot of fans, a lot of family. A lot of alums living in this area as well. Dessa Sure wide near side. And Fred Coleman off to the far side. Coleman's had a big day with three TD receptions. Third and 11 for Marcus Tuyas Sopo. Marcus drops back, rolling out right. Pass is thrown over to Dessa Sure, and he is dropped well short of the first down. Pick up of a couple. So the Huskies will punt it away again. Good throw on the run, though. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo running a little bit of that option in high school and, and throwing the ball on the run as well. Good technique right there, delivering the ball right where it had to be away from the defender. Give your receiver a chance to catch it. Notice his footwork right there. Strong arm. Baseball prospect, Kevin. So he's got a yeah. good arm. Played basketball at Woodenville as well. Sister was here with the volleyball team. Women's volleyball team played B uh, BYU last night. And we'll play them again tonight here on campus. Here's the punt by O'Laughlin, and this one's a spiral high into the air. Could be a good toward one. the goal line, and that one's out of bounds. They're going to rule it coming out to the 20 yard line. Oh, man. Yeah, they say they've crossed into the end zone before it got to the sideline, but he angled a beauty up there nonetheless. That may be his best punt of the afternoon. So BYU will have it at the 20 yard line. Overall synopsis of this game, Sonny, with the Huskies leading 42 20. Any surprises? Well, I think the big story is obviously in the second quarter, the UW defense is completely shutting BYU down. Yeah. And the offensive line and the offense of the Huskies uh, taking advantage of it, especially just before halftime. That big score put them up 21 7. Here's Materic back to throw. Look out, blind side and thrown for the loss. Ball loose. But they say he was down before the ball was juggled by Fateric. And he was hit <laughs> big time from behind that time. Coming in from the weak side with a big stop in there. Well, there's no question he was down. <laughs> oh, yeah. And planted. Chris Campbell able to get a nice sack on him today. He's been chasing the quarterback all afternoon. Sooner or later, he's going to get his chance. Great pursuit by Campbell. Very quick on his feet. 42 20 the cab Washington leading and movement on the line and finger pointing <laughs> and accusations they've had a lot of discussions this afternoon well they have the officials uh, the opener they had a chance to sort it out the Huskies and the Cougars obviously a little tight early in this game. Ball starts and early penalties. Huskies defense on their heels early when BYU and the opening drive went for the touchdown. But uh, as Sonny mentioned, they were able to recover quickly. Jim Lambright kind of rallied the group, made some adjustments, and defensively they've held BYU in check, except for those. Those pass plays. Federick with a couple of touchdown passes here in the second half. Pulled BYU up to 20 on the board. 42-20 the count. Federick back to throw. Drops into his own end zone. Flares a pass over the middle. And that is dropped. Over there by Snowden. 
Brings up a third down situation for BYU deep in their own end. Third and 23. Federick's got to watch out for the sack opportunities for the Washington defense. Washington passing yardage 288, BYU 294, but the rushing yards 282 for the Huskies. Better than 500 yards garnered this afternoon by Washington's offense. Brock Hewitt 18 to 23, 285, just shy of his career high 311 and three touchdowns. That's one off tying his career mark set last year of four against Oregon State. Sheehy with a big afternoon. Over 170 yards rushing with a touchdown. Maurice Shaw with a couple of rushing TDs. Coleman with two Full touchdown start. receptions. To me, those would be, I would think, the, the icing on the cake. When you get those kind of performances from kids who, as you mentioned last year, Sonny Coleman didn't get a touchdown. Shaw is second on the depth chart. When you get those kind of performances from your, your backup guys, your, your number two guys in your depth chart, it just breeds confidence for those fellas. And just another weapon you can use next weekend, huh? That's right. Got to use the confidence factor. Federick back to throw again in his own end zone. Needs a bundle for the first down. Flows a pass out here off to the near side. Mel Miller is down there to make the stop. And the receiver. Jabari Issa got outside as well to lend a little support on that little flare pass thrown out there. Aaron Cup with a reception. Just about a minute left here in the ball game. Once again, Washington will have an opportunity to get the football back. Jerzinka this time is way up at his own 40 to receive the punt from J.D. Hartsfield. Hartsfield comes to the side of the foot with this one, taken at the center of the field by Jerzinka. Jukes works out right side. Goes up the middle, tried to cut back, and then is upended and plowed his head right into the turf, but pops right up. Flags thrown on the play. As the Huskies now are at the BYU 44 yard line. Well, the Huskies put points on the board in the second and in the third quarter and have overcome BYU 42-20 with uh, just under a minute left in the contest. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, the fine freshman out of Woodenville, the quarterback now for the Huskies. He's had a couple of series. And uh, let's see if he'll just drop to a knee if they try to get off a play. They're going to try to get off a couple plays here. They've got Davis in motion. They'll turn and hand off. Man up the middle, Jason Harris will get another call. And the official goes down. The he pops right up. <laughs> Don't want to get hurt. We're here with a minute left. Holy no. cow. Heck no. The Huskies next weekend have San Diego State at home, followed by Nebraska at home. It's a great tune up on the road. A lot of pressure when you're ranked as high as the Huskies have been. With some uh, somewhat if you will unproven players in key positions and players that have had not a great deal of experience in those key positions but boy, after surrendering a TD on the opening drive to BYU Washington's been very confident and they've gotten performances solid performances from a number of people now at about 30 seconds left timeout is called by BYU <laughs> or actually the end of the game the clock uh, obviously has been malfunctioning it has been since half and so Triple zeros up on the clock, and the Huskies have a victory to begin the year. So, a very, very nice win for the Washington Huskies over the BYU Cougars. Back-to-back -back wins last year and again this year for Washington over BYU. Final score, 42-20. The Dogs win this one in Provo.